Hi, I'm Clint. I'm controlling the 37 shitlords these fuckheads are gonna kill. Over here we have... Uh, Yui Yokior. Uh, also known as Yui. Thank God. I'm Domino. Uh, Uriel. I'm... Kanathar. <laughs> 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 I'm Turok. And I'm Cassius. Alright. And Karnan normally sits over there, but he's not here today. That is factual information. All right, so this is our uh, next session in the uh, seasonal arc. Um, uh, just as a note before we begin, guys, um, a lot of times I'm when I'm creating the scenarios, I'm rolling perception checks for you. So, but um, <clears throat> so I factor that into some of the things that happen in the sessions. Um, but that doesn't mean you guys shouldn't make your own perception and insight and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, anytime I say something like your gut instincts say, that means I've rolled an insight check on, on the group's behalf and factored in your bonuses and stuff, which I have all written down before me. Um, any comments, questions, concerns before we get started? Are we still level three? Yes, you're still level three. Um, who wants to do the recap from uh, last time and the RP? I guess I'll do the recap. <coughs> So last time we entered the games um, of Wallace and we fought all the way through, uh, was it 10 rounds? Eight. Eight rounds. All the way to the end, um, defeated it. Uh, we were given a bonus round where we were able to fight each other um, in which Dave's character won. Karnan. Um, Karnan won the games and uh, we were given 1,900 gold each. The four of you were. The, the four, four of you that participated. That participated. We were also given uh, gold badges, which kind of unlocks, uh, like, the people, ability people to People know get us now. Like, we're, we're known. It kind of, it, it's like a resume that you wear on your chest. Um, then we were met with, in our uh, role play, we were given meetings with three, four people. Four people. Um, four different people, and we agreed to help a woman who was looking to get her fallen family members out of the desert near the well. The font. The font. Uh, Kandara Octon. Uh, she was looking to recover the corpses of her family that had died in a ra razor storm out there. And she needed uh, escort out there and protection to get to her family and get them to a burial place. Mm -hmm. We were also um, approached by a entrepreneur and collector of archaeologists. Archaeology. Herber Compto. He is a famed archaeologist in uh, Yafka. Yep. We were approached by him to find some uh, magical artifacts. Uh, we were also later approached Specifically by... Specifically the artifacts made from the corpses of the gods. Yes. Um, we were also uh, approached by Kendara's uncle. Father. Who, father. Sorry. Maybe I should have done the. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because I, 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 I'm I pretty sure it said uncle in there. No, no, he is the uncle of the king, king. of Wasp. <laughs> okay, that's what I got. Not Kendara. <laughs> Kendara's father, anyways, uh, tried to hire us to assassinate all of her party and bring Kendara back. We dismissed him very rudely, and uh, after signing a non-disclosure agreement. After signing a non-disclosure agreement. Um. And then we were also approached by Helia Blood uh, Blood Raptor to hunt dragons, which would have been really awesome, but we chose the first two. <laughs> I, uh, I had explained to her how we had already accepted more contracts than we probably should be at one time anyways. And, uh, <laughs> yes. I tried to put her down lightly as to oh, hopefully keep future Kyle. dealings with her. <clears throat> And she was like, yeah, all right, whatever. We were able to get two out of three contracts, or two out of four contracts, so that's, that's, that's a win. Picking up two out of four <laughs> major plot lines, that's going to be fine. <laughs> it's not going to present any difficulties for my end of things. I still think we could have I would have shot for three. And her dad's. <laughs> all we have to do is finish hers first. Yes, yeah, exactly. Finish hers first. Put her family to waste, and then... We really okay. never played Fable. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um... It is the 14th of 10th month, 4032 DOS, about 10 in the morning. Last night you finished your meetings with potential employers at about like 1. Um, you returned to the Jostle Jackass uh, 
some of you got a good night's rest. Some of you, um, Cassius uh, went out and procured 90 days worth of supplies and a wagon for your trip into the desert. Um, uh, Kandara, Octon, and her party are expecting you to meet them at the Balancing Bronco at 10 this evening. And uh, Herbert Compto is expecting you at his home at 107 Way of Kings Avenue. Uh, as soon as you're ready to leave, uh, he left it very open-ended. Um, uh, Cassius was able to also able to procure <coughs> a wagon and draft crosank for 100 gold in addition to the supplies for 90 days. Um, blah, 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 blah. I don't think you told me the price of what the 90 day supply was. I have them written down. If you want them. Yes. Uh, 432, 37, 437 gold and 4 silver. Domino happily gives you 100 gold for those supplies. Actually, wait. <coughs> I fucked that up. That would be two. Who are we meeting? At the what Bronco? We're meeting. The Jostle Jackass? 219 gold it? and the 2 silver. Bronco. No, oh, yeah, it's I still one. give you 100 gold. Yes, yes. And that is <coughs> the girl. Whose name is Casey? Kandara. Kandara. At the Jostle. Kandara. Not Kansi. Okay. And that was um, 100 gold for the other. 100 gold for the wagon and the crow sank. And then 219 for the supplies. Correct. We also got supplies for the freeloading um, archaeologist because he has not been out there, it sounds like, for yep. much. Um, we started with 1900 exactly. Alrighty, I'm all set. Uh, Kevin, can you do me a favor and keep a running tally of how many days Herber is with you? Um, which will probably be starting today on the 14th. Because um, his payments scheme that you guys agreed to was five gold per day, I believe. Per person? Per person. Yeah, and if we find something, it was I've been actually keeping a daily uh, per artifact. 2,000 per artifact for the group. Five gold per day per person. I've actually been keeping like a journal anyway, so that works. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thank you. As a refresher, um, if you have the map handy anywhere, um, <coughs> the font is very visible. You'll be going south of to Wallace, and then you'll be heading kind of east towards square N26. Kandar uh, agreed to pay each of you 500 gold uh, to get to the font and recover the bodies, and another 500 to get to the Octon lands at square N26. 500 each? 500 each. So 1,000 total for each of you for the trip. So we um, the 550... Wait, excuse me, no. Uh, the 900 mile trip. Okay. So we were paid up front, you said? No, not yet. You haven't been paid anything yet. Okay. Um, Herber wants to go to... And as a refresher, Herber wants to go to Millen, the City of Slaves, to recover the Chalice of Balance as part of his quest to recover the various <laughs> artifacts, the Afka. Um, and it'll be about 200 more miles. All total, you're going to be traveling about 1,100 miles for this, these two quests that have meshed together. Um, I'm excited about that. <coughs> nah, it'll work. You'll be fine. Or it won't. Just kill one of them. Yeah, just Kill one. Or one of them could die. Herber has six hit points. What? That's not fair. Cool. Noted. Kandara, Kandara has 16. <laughs> That's alright. It's okay. The wagon I bought, I should probably go over because I don't think anyone else... Your wagon is stuffed with 90 days worth of supplies, so good luck with that. <laughs> Underneath <walking>? the wagon. <laughs> you can ride on top of it. Underneath the oh. wagon, there is a burlap sack. With a trap door into the bottom, you can pull the burlap sack down for like cover or shade. Or so Mo is most Kandara wagons have guys, awnings we contact about, her dad like on an RV and collect his. Yeah. Yeah. All right, right. I, just, <laughs> I wanted that just. Do they as have like, like grass rolls too? Extra what shade, like a little grass roll, like a mat. So yeah, we're, it's just put our chairs in. <laughs> Worst case, if Kendara dies, pillows. we can contact her dad and get that right. Like. I mean, he probably wouldn't be happy if she died. Cause right, she, he doesn't want her to die. Yeah, yeah, everyone she knows and cares about. Oh, that's true. Except himself. Right, but it doesn't feel like she cares So, about blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, it was implied in your conversations that Kandara's party already had supplies for themselves. <coughs> Herber, as a rookie noob to the desert, does not. 
Um, because of your other meetings, you also know that Kendar's father, Ardar, Ardar Hargrove, is the most powerful man in Walhawk. He is seeking to hire mercenaries to kidnap his daughter before she reaches the dead and deep desert. And kill us now. Probably you have been folded into his, his political machinations. Um, uh, Halia Blood Raptor. Um, you also know that from your meeting with Halia Blood Raptor that the Sunless Ravine, which she'll kind of pass within like 50 to 75 miles of on your way south, you also know that there are dragons breeding there. Oh, that's probably what would We could have got the third one. Oh my god, we probably went there. You could have picked all three of them up. Damn it, it's on the way, guys. Four. <laughs> we I, the was... other three. <laughs> I told you, we just complete Kandaras and then afterwards. I, I was, as a DM, to, I already felt bad for picking two. That's fine. They'll, they'll so, work. It'll work. I would have tried to swindle the dragons if we could have gotten three. Out of character, I feel hilarious that Kyle was like, oh shit, we weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> I, texted, I texted Kevin, I'm like, of course. I set up an RP to get you guys hired, and Kyle goes and swears blood oaths. <laughs> when he did that, I was like, we still have three more people to talk to. <laughs> I had a similar reaction, Greg. <laughs> I didn't know we had three other people to talk to. I gather. What's behind door number one? I want that door. <laughs> I don't want to see I must door. have that door. <laughs> I think thematically, though, for him, yeah, it makes sense for Cassie's thematic. <laughs> So, it's 10 in the morning, it's the 14th, Kandara is expecting you at the Balancing Bronco, Bronco in 12 hours. What do you do? Breakfast. That's a good place to start. You have a nice breakfast, um, there's some salted fish, uh, a little bit of egg, the friendly bearded Goliath man running the uh, Jostle Jackass is... Wake and bake. You know, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Some dank fish, if you know what yeah, I mean. Some dank fish. fish. <laughs> 90 days? Yeah. Shit, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> 12 hours I have. <clears throat> yeah, I got my own wagon. <laughs> I want to buy 90 days worth of weed. <laughs> I like to think that. Why Mario is, reminds is his him. wagon on fire? Why is there so much smoke coming out of it? Bro, I don't know if, I don't know if it's actually is he vaping fire? in there. What's going on? Sick cloud. Is it, the hot box was born. <laughs> Literally, I don't have to light it here. It's metal. Just <laughs> all right. Yeah, Domino's just gonna relax in the tavern until they have to leave. He's he's soaking up every last minute of relaxation. He can. Mind you, Kandara does not know that you guys have a have, are bringing on bringing Herber along as well, and this is kind of a funeral procession that you're doing for her. That should work out great. Guys. That should be fine. You just invited some Thanks, Cass, yes. some stranger into her funeral procession. <laughs> I will, claim, game. I will claim him <laughs> as Cassius's brother. And if you remember the RP, she was clearly in a very calm, just not emotionally distressed or distraught state. I may have threatened her. <laughs> what? I may have. I was pulling out the dagger. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The... <laughs> yeah. So, Domino is chilling. Yep. Everyone's having breakfast. You guys have breakfast. It's fine. Nothing starts on fire. Yeah, Don will kind of. Are you, are you all wearing your like gold like? We won the no. union. Event. No, okay. yeah, <laughs> I don't have us. one. <laughs> I was it's conducting a Goliath wedding at I the time. The four wearing, of you. It's like not going to college. It's gonna haunt me forever. Don knows his tuck just like that, but down into his. Yeah, he's no. wearing it, but he's not openly showing it. Yeah, I think. I, he and, he's, and he's probably a little prouder that he got than he got it than he's really willing to admit. He to absolutely like, is. Especially yes. Cassius. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's a little chubby. He, like, he puts hey. it on his. He puts it on his yeah, chest, and the whole time I'm basically like. So, <laughs> hey, look what I got here. So this is my friend Amber. Amber, this is Cassius. This is Goldie. I don't know who he is, apparently. <laughs> so, no, I'm not wearing one, if that's what you're asking. I was in charge of a wedding. Yep. No one cares, Greg. Take your real-life bullshit elsewhere. Sounds about like my life. <laughs> that's not real life. I thought I was conducting a Goliath wedding at the time. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's what that's where Domino wanted to pick oh, that's up right. while we're eating breakfast. Uh, yeah, where uh, where were you guys? They're the bar already. <laughs> <laughs> I was with my newfound family. Mm. They welcomed me with open arms, and I am now married. <laughs> These customs are strange, but not legally binding in the desert. <laughs> Good to know. So Good just no big deal, eh? 
I feel bad about missing the games. I wish I would have been there with you guys. No, no, no. I mean, they're cool with you leaving to the desert. Oh, I haven't really went over that, but (laughs) I'll be gone. Time to create six (laughs) Goliath brothers. (laughs) Solid foundation of a marriage. I like to think of it like the mob's going to be constantly hunting his character and just keep (laughs) showing up. Who are you? (laughs) Who are you? Did anybody (laughs) ask favors last time we were with him? It was his daughter's wedding. I did conduct a wedding, so I asked a favor of two of 1,950 gold. <laughs> was it obliged? And, one of <laughs> and, and a golden match. <laughs> uh, the wedding was good. It went well. Family was very small. It was a single daughter with only uh, a mother. Her father had died. <laughs> Who are all those people? <laughs> Uh, and anyways, as long as you're coming with us, we're going to need you out in the desert. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I believe I was there when we had the meetings. So. Yeah, in spirit. Was, yeah, you were all <laughs> there. <laughs> there. I didn't we didn't have time to talk about it that night, though. Like, it was, it was a force right. project. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you're doing it. What? What did you say? They were, and then he died. They were force projecting. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. I don't watch Star Wars. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> did you die after Psionics <laughs> does not exist in this world. That's true. It's not. <laughs> no psionic classes. Thanks, fifth edition. Well, technically, it does, kind of. Depending on whether or not you include on that joke, man. Anyway, so, all right. You guys are all... Yep. I'm listening. What do you guys do? Um, my what, do you, what do you guys think that um, Kandar is going to think about us inviting other guy along? Uh, that's Cassius's cousin. <clears throat> I mean, he didn't know that. Um, I did not think about that. Should we, um, <laughs> I, should we meet, maybe meet a little early? I to, presume he's part of our troop now and we introduce well, him as such. Not a bad idea. Maybe one of us should uh, go to KDR first. Maybe if I might, one goes and picks up. If I might speak Herbert. as the DM for a moment. You may. Kandar at one point was a noblewoman in the city, and he is a very prominent archaeologist and historian. It stands to reason that they might know of or know each other. I'm. Okay. We did mention to Herber about her, right? Yes, yes. Herber knows. Just not the other way. Yeah, he had no problem not the important going way. along. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not uh, I'm not really one wise with words. Uh, I should probably go explain to Kendaro. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I think it should be you as well. All right, Cassius. I guess I'm on board with that. I'll um. Will we can go get Herber, and we can meet you at Kendara's. Okay. So that was the plan. Do I even meet Kendara? You guys are all meeting Kendara. Um. I think they were gonna go get Herber, and I was gonna hit the Kendar. You're gonna get okay. Right. Yeah, we're gonna go get Herber, and okay. he's gonna go sweet talk. He's gonna break uh, the ice, Kandara. Okay. About Herber. Okay. Well, I think right. we should talk to him, or talk to her after. So, like, if they're, if her and the archaeologist are like pretty close, I mean, it wouldn't be too ridiculous for him to come. In, well, that's in that's what he's, he's just gonna go mention it that he's, he's gonna. He's come. He's gonna. Go we should know the relation everything. from him though, because he's not gonna really care. Well, yeah, we can talk. What does Herber knows? We have yeah, to talk to him first, did, find out their exact relation. I see. So it, if so we then, say to him, like, hey, we either way, we exit. invited somebody uninvited on what is, what Clint said, essentially a funeral procession. Whether they know each other or not, it's probably more in a professional manner than a friend manner. We still need to let her know first. I yeah. think, yeah, I think we should definitely let her know first. Okay. No matter what. So, so Cassius is going to Kandara, the rest of you are going to Herber. I'll, we'll handle Herber first. Love it. Um, because that's gonna be as as we're as we're parting ways. Uh, Don will kind of pulls Cassius apart and says, "Hey, uh, you m- you might want to mention that she's uh, that you know this desert trek can be a little bit dangerous." And oh, I was we figured this might this way we can keep her costs down and he can kind of help pay for our costs to to help her as well. Well, I was gonna sell it to her as uh, strength in numbers and yeah. You know what you're doing, Cassius. I did get I did land a stat. <laughs> Do good, kid. So. Right, you got us into the goddamn mess. <laughs> That's why I'm fixing it. <laughs> All right, good luck. We're dying. Okay. All right. So you guys <laughs> arrive at 107 Wave Kings Avenue. 
I find it to be kind of a, a walled estate. It's got like, it's, it's like you know like gray stone walls. Um, there are like <clears> four kind of medium sized black stone Bujgao buildings in there, um, and it's got paths and, and like there's a there's like dirt piled over here, and it's got like a little pond, and there's like a water feature kind of thing, and you know it's 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 kind of which like the the typical nobleman's estate kind of. Opulence. Opulence, yes. Are, Excellent. are these Lujgao buildings, are they, like, it? completely opaque and, like, can't be entered, or...? No, they have openings. Okay. They have doors and uh, windows and that sort of thing, but it's all for, like... It's not designed for human-sized or Goliath-sized creatures. It's designed for 12-foot-tall creatures. That's okay. the only weird thing about them. Okay. Well, there's a lot of weird things about them. But... No toilets. No toilets. Immune to magic. Completely indestructible. You know. Like Kim Jong Un, you just don't have to go. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the wall is made of regular <laughs> gray stone, kind of no wonder we haven't gone to <laughs> laid atop black Lujgao stone that is the the floor of the city, so to speak. Um, the gate's normal and made of iron and that kind of thing. There's like a bell, like you, to ring for visitors, and you kind of ding, and a, a young human man in white robes greets you. Uh, he apparently recognizes you because you, he ushers you into the building, and it's a well-lit interior of a black stone building that has been, it's been painted, like on the exterior it's black stone, but on the inside it's been painted kind of a, a soft white color. There are rugs everywhere to make nice. it kind of look less bare, and there are, you know, it looks like it's lived in and clean, and there's, um, yeah, it's kind of standing in a waiting area, munching on provided snacks and cool water, and after maybe 20 minutes, Herbert Confo appears. And like I think I said, this is an 80-year-old man. Like, he looks in really good shape because the city reinforces right. human and Goliath Ooh. biology and, and makes city folk appear softer and less weathered. Um, but he's an 80-year-old man, and he's wearing what might be defined as desert gear. He's got, like, a backpack, a walking staff. <laughs> is How quickly after leaving the desert... Do the effects wear off at all if you leave the desert, or does it like kind of just like there are, there are <laughs> benefits? Is he going to be like a liability in the desert when he looks he has very six, spry now? He I has guess is what I'm asking. Six hit points he, now. Is he going to have one when we leave this? No, city? no. Does does uh, Turok bring this up like kind of as we're walking over? Yeah, there? I guess. Donald, yeah, he's going to be a liability. We're there to protect him. We're getting paid for that, and we're going to have to do it. Oh, that is true. <clears throat> <clears throat> so when like Domino leaves the city, his knees ache and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Domino's knees always ache because Domino has spent ninety percent of his life outside of the cities. I did Actual. purchase her oil oil knees ache for Domino's when he's muscles. out of the cities because he percent of his that life was in on the, the list. Does that mean he has oil? If that makes ninety sense. days worth yeah. of oil, <laughs> like like pepper oil, like for his joints. <laughs> so. <it's, laughs> Herbert is wearing what might be defined as desert gear. He has like a backpack, a walking staff, some sturdy boots, a cap with kind of like a like a like a bill on it to keep his the sun out of his eyes and that sort of thing. Um, and he's got like kind of light leather clothing, kind of like half armor, half clothing like like kind of situation, um, kind of protecting most of his skin from the exposed skin from the sun and potential razor storms and that sort of thing. It all looks brand spanking new, like it, it is gleaming and. F- Fresh from like a, a leather store. Is is part of our mission with him to get him back to the city safely? Um, it is with Kendara. Yes. Right. Yes, but with Herber. Well, the assumption is that if he's dead, he will stop paying you. So <laughs> my assumption, <laughs> going my safely question everywhere. though is, if we get a an artifact and he dies. Do we still get Now you have an artifact of the gods. Right. Do we still get the 2,000, or is he sending someone out to pay us each time? It's not like he's carrying this much gold on him, um, correct? Herber does not have a lot of dealings with mercenaries, so out of character, non, non-character non knowledge, Herber has a bunch of, like, the equivalent of traveler's checks in the bottom of his pack. <laughs> okay. Like, this can be redeemed at the bank of whatever for 2,000 gold. Okay. For a thousand gold, for five hundred gold, you know. I can't wait till we get to that interaction. <laughs> there are banking. We do have a thief. There are banking establishments in this world. So like, I was wondering about that <laughs> next. If he were to die <laughs> early on, but like yeah. before we leave the city. <laughs> I mean, you'll be able to loot his corpse. 
I leave all of my estate to <laughs> um, <laughs> the people that I died in their charge. Of. <laughs> so <laughs> Herbert kind of steps down the stairs, leading up to another room, and puts his cane down. And, Gentlemen, hello. Is it time? I'm ready. You seem ready, Herbert. Uh, it, it is not time yet. We have words and dealings. Well, that, was, that was the end of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, I thought it was time. What are we doing? <laughs> you make it look like an asshole. Yeah, I, I, think think it's time. I think it's time. Do you guys yeah. arrange like a time to like meet back at the Jostle Jackass or at the uh, Bouncing Bronco? Yeah, we'll say that's what we'll, you said. It was twelve yeah. hours before we had to get to Con- Kandara, so I presumed that it's like eleven and a half hours until we have to be there. <laughs> Maybe you guys do this later in the day. Yeah. How about that? We did. Yeah, I kind of spend the whole day like thinking how I'm going to word this, and as well as the shopping trip. Well, he says, I'm also he fine says he, with. He says he's in his room planning, but he's really just like looking at. He's in his room exactly. playing. He's he's planning with air quotes. Doing doing the equivalent of posting on Instagram his badge. Yes, that is exactly what's happening. <coughs> so let's just change the chi- timeline around. Like it's a little more later in the evening. Maybe so you guys napped a little it. during the day. Maybe. You know, he serviced his wife before he left for his long trip into the desert. That kind of thing. I'm going to have a wife so now, in every city. <laughs> so now the marriage is consummated. The it's marriage binding. is consummated. <laughs> Unless now it's binding in the desert. Check. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> sex, sex is what it, the desert is. Make, make right. a performance check. This. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's hand wave it and say that you guys have an agreement to, like, Herber and you guys will roll up to the, the balancing Bronco and, like, if they're ready, they're ready. If not, we'll just go on by. We're just walking past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. We're still arguing. Keep walking. Keep walking. <laughs> keep walking, guys. <laughs> and you, you guys can tell that Herber is excited. Like, like Herber, like if you were to have researched him in the past twelve hours, you would know that Herber does not do field work. Herber hires people like yourselves to go find shit, bring it back, and then he sits in his his lab. Like dusting it and cleaning it and, and doing research on it and analyzing it and all that kind of thing. Herber has been out in the desert, but Herber has never done like field work per se. Like this is a completely new experience for him and he's very fucking excited. Okay. Is there a reason he's so adamant about coming out with us as opposed to previous? previous uh, what is previous? your insight, UE? UE is plus two. Is that accurate for your wisdom <coughs> bonus or insight bonus? Yes. Yui gets the impression that Herber is getting ready to die. Hmm. Herber has reached a certain age where he is the for- at the forefront of his field, and this is kind of, I want to do something cool before I go. I have had a long life. The cities have extended it. I want to do something cool before I go. And that is kind of what this is. Okay. <clears throat> it's a swan song. Yeah. It's a bucket list. Bucket list swan song. His bucket list is recovering all of the artifacts made from the dead gods. Enormous bucket list. <laughs> Just astronomical. <laughs> he wants to achieve complete and utter magical domination of the continent as his, uh, as his bucket list. Just to see what happens. Are we sure when he has all those he'll actually die? Or? <laughs> Can I use my charisma well, one to connect of them, with him to get a little bit of a bonus One of them that. is the blood of everlasting spring, which could be immortal. Great. If you guys find it. Great. What do we know that, though? It's Legend. in the background information. <laughs> it's stuff people and know. And we all said we and read you, that. And you're, right, Andrew? you're real? You're real? You're real has studied the artifacts of Yafka a little. Just a little bit. Well, Donald's going to make buddies with uh, you real. Because <laughs> no. he's getting pretty old. And while you two are doing that, I'm going to throw up in the corner. <laughs> so, Cassius. Okay. Cassius, you arrive at the balancing Bronco like maybe like nine, nine thirty thereabouts. Just enough to, to have some wiggle room while they wrangle Herber and get everything situated. Um, and you immediately see that it's a, a very much higher class place than the Jolt of Jackass. This is a place that takes some fucking coin to pay for a week's stay. It has a walled enclosure, it has guards like not like just like just like city guards like bored out of the mines. These are like actual like hired mercs. Guarding this place, and, and by the by, their attentiveness, they're paid well. There's an attached spa. 
there's a large secure structure for wagons and beasts of burden. It's it's <clears throat> it's a classy place. Well, and it's way out there. of your 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 pace. Get well, not right. not now because you, you won the game. Yeah. You won the <laughs> fucking games. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, on my pace. Yeah. <laughs> um, the guards of the establishment aren't keen on letting you guys in. That's fine. You in, but eventually, um, you convince them to bring Metris down. So real, real quick, so, so with the, my understanding with the badge is we're essentially nobles in the city now. No. No? Okay. You're High entertainers. People you know. Okay. At most, you're, you're famous entertainers. That's about okay. it. Like you're a celebrity. You're a celebrity. Yeah, okay, yeah, celebrity. celebrity. Okay. That's the word I'm looking for. You're still not a politician. You're, you're still like not a politician. Stanley. I don't know if we had, like, You still have no real cost, power. So. Mm-hmm. But you wear um, armor. Eventually, the Metris comes down. Uh, he's not wearing his armor at this point, just like some, some nondescript robes. Um, he's got a sword belt, his long sword belt on. Uh, he sees you, gestures, you know, guards, get out of here, I, I got this. Um, uh, he says, Cassius, uh, greetings. Greetings. What brings you here early? Um, Are we ready? To, you don't have the rest of your party with, with you. I, I assume you're not ready to go. I hope it's not a complication. No, uh, we do have uh, one minor... Uh, adjustment uh, we do need to make to the traveling and as you know it is very costly to travel into the desert and very dangerous and there is a strength in numbers uh, to kind of help cover the cost for venturing um, we did take on another patron to kind of assist with the price of everything for the entire caravan his his kind of placid expression kind of <coughs> flattened into not really pleased expression. And he says, and I at that point I, I kind of go, well, I did say, or I did come here alone um, as it was my doing that uh, we took this job on. So I figured it would be fair to um, confess in person. So you, you're telling me that you have incorporated into Kandara's task, another individual traveling the desert. Yes, they uh, too needed protection. Are there any other are there any other surprises? Are we picking up other riders along the way? Or are we are we just going to make a whole big production out of this? No, not a big protect production. Um, we do we did uh, procure supplies for ourselves and uh, the person coming along with us. So it's not to be a, a burden um, any further than we already are. Um, and where is this uh, individual's destination? Or I assume he's not being left at the fond. Um, I kind of relay, I guess at this point, I'll, I'll our uh, patron is Herber, the uh, archaeologist. Herber Tomso? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. What is his uh, final destination? Um, he has a few. Yeah, he uh, he has Millen is uh, where we will be heading. Um, mm. Hence why we picked him up uh, since we will be in the area. Interesting. Make a persuasion check. Uh, Fourteen. Okay. Bye. And he walks up, and you assume to go talk to Kandara. And there, <coughs> there's about a half hour where he's in there. And eventually comes down You're and sweating. says, <laughs> "There is strength in number in the deserts, what? and yeah. you have additional supplies." No, and, and now I've been had head, so I can't figure. Fine, out. whatever. <laughs> Let's go. All the time. Okay. <laughs> um, we did it. We Not right now, but when your wagon gets here, and and you know. Ooh, and I, I kind of at this point, I'm I'm continuing to like apologize. Like excessively, um, you know, just whatever, whatever reasoning he can, he can try to just like, our services are in demand. You know, we, <laughs> you, you know how what kind of difficult or how difficult it is to try to find someone trustworthy. Can we, can we, ma- can we uh, rule this where we're walking up as he? Yes, <laughs> yes, that's what's that's what's going to happen. So, Domino will come up. And Say, ah, oh, well, 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 you know, I'm sure we got everything in order. Is everything good here? Yeah. Metris is, is kind of like, all right, whatever it takes to... Metris is... Metris' stance is whatever it takes to get a bunch of bodies onto the desert to recover the, 
the bodies, you know. Just bodies helping bodies. Bodies helping bodies. <laughs> Archaeologists like understand, you know, the dead and, and would have the same respect and okay enough. <laughs> so Metris um, goes back inside and, and you know there there are three kind of desert looking dudes in like very light leather armor, kind of like you know. Uh, cloth over the backs of their necks and uh, from hanging from hats to kind of keep the sun off the back of your neck and stuff. Um, just kind of desert looking dudes with bows and knives and stuff. They're they're wrangling some what, three wagons of supplies and with prosangs and that kind of thing. And, and you get the impression that they're associated with Kandara and Metris, but because I mean they're desert dudes, why would they be at this fancy fucking place? You know, they look as weathered as you guys. Um, what did they hire more mercenaries? Uh, she never specified whether there were more mercenaries, but they specified that they had a party. Oh, okay. So there were, you knew there were more than just the Metris and Kandara. Um, and eventually everyone kind of gets wrangled. Um, Kandara is... Where is it here? Make sure I got this right. Kandara is still kind of wearing those black robes and black everything, kind of like... And, and you can tell like she's got like armor and like maybe a bow poking out of the, the back of her robes and stuff. Um, she's still wearing morning clothes and, and Metris has his, his heavier leather armor on and his sword and his shield and stuff. Um, and uh, Metris, uh, Kandara you see now has her hair all braided and you see she's got colored bits of glass and stuff in the braid and like a feather or two here and there. And you can see that these three cousin, these three uh, desert dudes have the same kind of thing going on in their hair, like colored glass and feathers. And you think it's kind of like a tribal kind of thing, like maybe the Octon tribe does that with their hair, with the colored glass and the feathers. And Do we think it's maybe like specifically ceremonial to this this travel, as, or to put these bodies at the rest, or put them to rest, or? Kind of, uh, your, your impression is more jewelry than okay. like any sort of thing associated with the funeral and that kind of thing. Okay. Um, so, Herbert is kind of like riding on your wagon, like, ah, it's a ride. I'm excited. I'm very excited, you know? Um, and, and you know, Kandara and Metris are talking to these other three dudes and riding their wagons and all that stuff. And and Herbert kind of eases himself off the wagon and kind of tries to flag you guys down and says, um, your instincts are that he recognizes her the way she looks. Um, she doesn't seem to like recognize him just on sight and you guys introduce them and they're polite and friendly and and she kind of like makes a oh when his name is introduced as Herbert Comto but he see he recognizes her on sight your gut instincts say he knows her on sight um, and he kind of pulls you guys aside and says do you know who she is do you know the name of her family here in Wallace who her father is yes. we have an idea would fessing up to that violate the non yes 100% well, no, no. Just that you met Not, him. That we met him. That we you know, met him. We know who she he, is. He tried to hire you. We don't know that her dad wants us to kill her friends. We definitely do not know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, he goes on to say, her, her name is Kandara Haru. She left the city perhaps 20 years ago in the care of her bodyguard with the young warrior of the Octum tribe. They hail from the deep desert near... Millen? Millen, I think? Her father sent bounty hunters and mercenaries after her to reclaim her. Three times she was dragged back to the city in chains. Her father meant for her to be used in his political empire, I think, for, you, you know, marriages and, and contracts, you know, binding powerful families together through marriage. That's a, a <coughs> thing nobles do. Um, three times her husband, and later her husband and her children, came into the city like blades in the night and recovered her. Each time was a black mark against the reputation of Arthur Hargrove. And each time it was bloodier than the last. These warriors from the desert cut through dozens of his guards to reclaim his daughter. Her father is a savage man, a monster with a fal false smile that hides blood-stained teeth. We must be wary on our quest. He will seek to put those teeth on our, on our throats if he becomes aware of our involvement with her. <clears throat> All the more reason to make this adventure exciting. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's news to us. I have no idea what you're talking about. I assume he'd be a stand-up guy. 
right. Can we yeah. pause here? I have to use the restroom. Yep. Yeah. Clint's got you. All right. So, everyone gets everything ready. It's about 10.30 now, and you're finally leaving. Everyone's situated on the wagons. The, the It turns out the three dudes are cousins to Kandar's husband, so they're cousins to her. Um, the three of them, Metris and Kandar, were the only survivors of the whole dead from a razor storm situation. Um, they're driving the wagons. Um, they've got short bows and long knives, like uh, long knives, like I said. So they're they're they can hunt at least, uh, so they can they can shoot things to defend the caravan. Um. So. And the, the cousins are covered with the same. I, sh I forgot to mention this initially, but the cousins are covered in the same like partially healed lacerations from like the razor storm that Kandara and Metris have. Like every inch of exposed skin is like a half healed scab from a razor storm. This, I guess, none of us asked, but does it seem like they maybe tried to do this once and failed? Um, your impression is that uh, it happened a, maybe a week or two ago, Her and they've been <clears> just, they just got back to the city recently and have been recovering. Herber had told us that several times... Oh, this is going to smell fantastic. That several times she had gone out and been Some dragged back. Some big two-week dead body. I, I do believe, I believe, <laughs> it, I believe this has been tried a few times again. I I, I think it's that's, my those instinct are different that, incidents, though. Yeah, the, 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 that those was are definitely that different incidents. Herber, uh. Herber was, your impression was that Herber was talking about like a story from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, oh. 5 years ago, rather than like they tried to do this a couple of years right, ago. Right, 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 right. Cool. So, cool, cool, cool. before we actually leave, do you guys intend on telling Kandara? About her father attempting you to hire, attempting to hire you guys to kidnap her. Maybe um, after we're out of the city. Didn't we sign? I'm sure she knows her father's. We signed a non-disclosure, but fuck the non-disclosure. He's trying to kill her. I mean, he's not trying to kill her. No, he's trying well, to. If we have reason to believe her he's going to ambush the caravan or have his agents ambush the caravan, the more eyes looking out for him, the better. I think. But didn't That's you true. say that that non-disclosure too is like magically binding, and if we break it, it's not magically knows. binding per se, but it does have your blood. And your name's on it. But it won't. If we say something, it's not just gonna go like. It's play. not gonna. It's yeah. not gonna ding and notify. <coughs> but they're gonna okay. know that but we definitely signed it for sure. Yeah, well, yeah maybe not yet, happen. but it's, it's, it's definitely on the back of my mind at least. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll discuss that in a tight group. I'm willing to discuss it. Can we get yeah. some magic lawyers in here to see how this works? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, where was my other fear? Oh, that's the best magic. That would be, would be an interesting magic world where all the magic was like. You had to have like a lawyer to understand how the magic works. <laughs> that would be. Magic you're telling you about this. You mean fancy magic? Will literally do you stop? Do you read a lot, Chase? Like, do you like reading fantasy novels? Uh, from time to time, yeah. So good. check out Max Gladstone and his craft sequence novels. Okay. It is the most fantastically interesting and awesome book you're gonna have series. To, you're gonna have to remind me about this book series about magical accounting. Yeah, send that, like. to the, send that to the group later, because uh, I'm almost done with the book and reading. Because I, I like when magic is done in, like, non-conventional ways. It's which is why, one of the reasons why I really like Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It's right. Mr. Norrell. I can't hold my head. Mr. Norrell. 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 All right. So you guys are driving through the streets, and there's plenty of room on these wagons for, for all of you. Um, and then the crowds are, like, so so much more depleted than they were yesterday or the day before. Like, it's like like half the population of the city just disappeared now that the games are over. And there's room for the wagons to move safely. You know, you have a little room for your elbows, you know. It's it's a little more comfortable for you guys to travel. Um, most all, I, I'm assuming all of you are seated on the wagons, um, unless you say otherwise. Okay. Definitely seated. Okay. So, Domino. A street urchin dressed in some like brown robes with like a deep cowl over his head kind of starts approaching the wagon you're on. And you're moving at a slow pace, so it's not like he can't catch up. And, and he's kind of limping and dragging one leg a little bit. And he's holding out a hand and he says, Alms, sir. Alms for a deformed youth unable to care for himself and find gainful employment. 
A perception check made on your behalf reveals that this is the voice of Yendon the orphan, pretending to be someone else. Dumbo jumps down. Okay. Uh, you approach him, yeah, and, yeah. What, what? Yeah. and he, what's up? He kind of pauses at you like he's he's looking for like a coin pouch and being really clumsy about it, and he says, "Watch your back out there." You don't I'm, look I'm gonna talk at normal volume, but he's whispering. Okay. <laughs> watch Me your, too. Watch your back out there. I heard which jobs you took and the meeting, and which meeting never happened that you didn't take. Word is the guy that you didn't meet with has sought other means of doing the thing he never hired you for to not do. <laughs> If you follow me. Word is there are at least a dozen contracts, a dozen high-paying contracts in the mercenary circuit that have gone out for recovering kidnapped family members. I'm pretty sure six of them are definitely for the thing the guy you didn't meet didn't want you to hire you for. <laughs> Probably more. Just fucking watch your back. You got it? You got it. So if you could do anything for me about it, too, do it. Don't get into some shit you can't, but you know what I mean. There's nothing I can do... The guy we're not talking about is way above my level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The more I think, I don't want you getting involved in that shit, anyways. Is I don't because I I just can't hear this. But is is he going to be any danger because he arranged this with us? You have no means of knowing. Okay. You, you Cassius have no like, means. I of know, knowing. but like out of out of character, like out of character, would it be something him. that Donald no might out of be. character? He's going to be fucking fine. Okay. I just. Was something like, I was curious because I mean he did arrange that and we did. Except, arrange unless he's not, happen, and you might find that out <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> so Domino kind of you know he's got to catch back up to the wagon and he says, "Thanks for the thanks for the warning, kid." No problem. Be safe. You stay safe as well. And as yeah, as like he's Domino turns to run away. He's like, "Oh, oh right, your arms." And the ending fumbles just as clumsily from the arms. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> We're good. And then he's stabbed and robbed. And Domino <laughs> jogs back up and catches on the wagon and pops on. All right. I slap you on the back and say, Domino is generous as ever. You <laughs> sly dog, you. <laughs> if you, you, just, if you could just know you that you hero of the people. From your... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's, it's done. It's a fucking gold. It's done. I did take right. the nine gold I made from showing off my bag. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <I'm not counting laughs> <for that. laughs> That's good. All right. So you guys leave the city. It's completely uneventful. You know. It's Is now the big customs line to leave as well. No, not really. I mean, they like, they're like take whatever you want out. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of like. You can tell the guards their heart isn't into it. It's just they're sick of dealing with people oh, leaving the city. You good. So. It's now the 19th of 10th month, 4,032 DOS at 3 a.m., around 3 a.m. The past five days and 100 miles have passed pretty uneventfully. You're now a day or two away from the deep desert, and it's kind of, and you're kind of in the, the flat, brownish-green scrubland that separate, separates city and town land from deep desert. Um, you're not stupid. You're competent desert folk. You've been setting up watches and scouting the area around you and that sort of thing. Um, you guys are resting about for eight hours at a time, usually during the mid midday, kind of in the very hot period of the desert. Um, Metris takes watch as well, so you're not all, you know, like you're you're not doing like hours and hours of, of keeping watch and then not getting enough sleep. You know, you guys are distributing it between yourselves, Metris and the cousins. So. One thing you do note from your time doing watches is that Kandara spends most of the time your group is supposed to be resting crying quietly in one of her wagons. Um, usually with Metris work lurking outside uh, the door, smoking a pipe. You know, She's clearly still like completely distraught after losing family members. Um, you know, the, the first... I'm kind of like fast forwarding through the first five days of travel so some things are happening. Um, the first time you guys stopped uh, on the journey to rest for everyone to sleep, you know, something very strange. Uh, Herbert Compto went a little ways away from the party, kind of kneeled on the ground. Um, he wasn't secretive about it, but it just seemed like he wanted a little bit of privacy. Um, he uh, placed four pieces of colored glass and a uh, kind of diamond shape on the ground um, and put a little silver cup in between them. Um, the four pieces of colored glass were green, brown, blue, white, and yellow. And he kind of uh, bowed his head 
over the little arrangement and clasped his hand clasped his hands together in prayer. I think he was confused about how the, the glass worked. Oh. <laughs> Green, brown. Because you said a lot of colors, but... There's blue, white, and yeah. yellow. Yeah. Blue, like a bluish yeah, white blue, color. Yeah, blue, white, okay. yellow. <laughs> That's kind of what I a did. A bluish, <laughs> white <laughs> color. Thank you. I, I gathered when you... It looked like thing. ice, but in colored glass form. Pretty. Um, uh, what he's doing is not an entirely unheard of thing, though it's kind of rare. Um, he was offering a prayer to the dead gods of Yafka, the god of endless winter, who supposedly lays wounded or da- and... Wounded and dying or healing in the font of shadows, depending on which sect you follow. Um, the god of unceasing spring, the god of unwavering balance, the goddess of eternal summer, and the goddess of perpetual autumn. These are the five gods of Yafka and Hasta. And he just went off and did his little thing. And they're all dead except for what, two of them, right? Uh, the god of endless winter. Is the and might be dead, might not be dead. Might not be dead, might be healing, might be dying, but it's, regardless, everyone believes it's in the, its body He's there. is in the font of shadows. Is there any proof of this? <clears throat> Besides rumor and Since no one's been in the legend? font of shadows, I have Not really. <laughs> not proof like... It is known. Yeah, I was there when they put him in there. There's nothing like that. I'm sure like, people claim to have been in there. It's known. No one's ever been in there. It is known. It's generally accepted that anyone <laughs> who claims they have is lying. <laughs> But it's generally accepted as fact that he is in there. In some state. In some state. So, um, it is the 19th? Yes, yeah, the 19th. Uh, yesterday you guys fought off some bandits. Uh, looked like it was a small family tribe that thought you were a softer target than you turned out to be. They were on riding pro sank, and once they discovered that you guys were all warriors, and Kandara and her three cousins are decent archers, they kind of peeled away from battle pretty quickly. Uh, no injuries on your side and a little bit of blood loss on theirs. This is kind of normal in this area. You know, they kind of thought you were maybe a little bit weaker than you turned out to be. A lot of people coming out of the city are probably easy targets. Yeah, so they... yeah, it's kind of... You were a target of opportunity that turned out to be a little less uh, soft than they thought. Um, you've been keeping an eye on your six, so to speak, and the perception checks I've made on your behalf haven't really revealed anyone following you in an obvious way. It's warm, you're all sweaty and tired. The gunmetal gun colored light of the moon is shining down and lending a metallic cast to everything. Uh, the air is still and the desert is quiet. Uh, luckily, you've been riding on the wagons, so you've mostly avoided stones getting stuck in your boots. Uh, it's going to be to be the time of uh, day where you circle the wagons up and kind of rest while the sun gets high in the sky. Uh, a few miles away in the distance, you can kind of see a rocky hill type thing and some gr- scraggly trees and that sort of thing. Uh, be a pretty defensible place to set up camp for your rest period, or you can try to push beyond it. Your call. You guys are in charge of the caravan, so everyone's deferring to you. It seems like if it's a good place to set up camp, then that seems like a good place to set up camp. Let's do that. Dominic's <laughs> always going to err on the side of caution. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> it's a different animal than the city. Don't rush it. That's right. <laughs> Dominic's always throwing stuff in, like, but like, how do you think I learned? How do you think I've lived this long? Not being foolish, and he always gives Cassius a glaring <laughs> look. Life's gardening, I dig it. I, I like to think that every time you do that, he's always doing something like, like dangerous, like trying to like pop a zit or something with a dagger. Pick his teeth with a knife. Pick his teeth with a knife. I did for that at work my day. I got in trouble by HR <laughs> for having a knife. <laughs> so it's uh, time passes. You guys Shoot, reach the the area. Kind of set up camp and everything. Uh, and Kandar emerges from the wagon to, to put on a stew and, and that sort of thing. You're all eating. You've all watered. Crow Sanks have been taken care of. Time passes. It's about 5 a.m. Sun's starting to rise in the east. Who's on watch? I'll be on watch. Take a nap. Yui. Yui. Yui's on watch? Mm-hmm. So you keep in watch, and there's kind of So that's kind of what your camp looks like. Look at that. We have no escape. No escape. Oh, um, the entire desert. No 
Tom's cape. So, Yui, um, you're kind of keeping watch, and, keep, and the desert's quiet, and you kind of hear... This is normal. This is, this is, this is normal. It's normal. <laughs> Everything is normal right now. Uh, long story short, Yui, you hear two groups of maybe like four or five people mm -hmm. kind of creeping through the, the sand and the scrub brush and that sort of thing. Can I tell from which direction? Uh, down and to the <coughs> left South, of me. Southeast. From here and there. By I presume this is north. Yeah, yeah um, towards me is north. Right. So southeast. some from the south and some from the northeast? South and east, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to rouse a few of the others so I know I hear people approaching. Okay. I'm going to start with Domino and Cassius. Okay. God damn it. So as you're, you're going to rouse Cassius and stuff, are you trying to be quiet about it? I'm not trying to cause a ruckus. I, yes, I'm trying to be quiet about okay, it. Okay, make a stealth know. check for me. Three. <laughs> you hear from the desert, shit, he heard us, get into gear! <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, I have my plus... <coughs> I have my plus eight, it's an 11. Excuse me. <laughs> And they got a 16, and they have a bonus on perception check. Awesome. So, Kevin, if you could zoom out a little bit on that map. Oh, no. Holy <laughs> hell. <laughs> so, Dude, I'm assuming we heard that then, right? Yeah, yeah, you heard that. So everyone, everyone's up, and this isn't a surprise round for you guys, because you, he was working to rouse some of you, and then someone yelled into the de desert, so it's not like a surprise round type situation, but... Domino and it wakes up in a cold sweat. Two arms! One, two. <laughs> <laughs> I have two arms and two short swords! Kind of a weird thing to say. Cousin <laughs> Winston knew a guy who had one arm. Ooh, refreshing flavor. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, are you doing Jabba the Hutt? <laughs> no, that's uh. 7 up. 7 up. These are cool nuts. Holy cool shit. <laughs> Some guy. Dexterity is anything, they right? Also right? That's a lot of initiative. Yes. Anything but thrown objects. Yeah. Thrown is strength. Space oh. bro. Mm -hmm. Scout for. I bet that guy's got. Oh, apparently I did not grab any Except throwing daggers. Daggers, so. daggers are dex too. Oh, apparently I didn't grab any throwing daggers either. So I'm either the worst. Do you, do you want uh, throwing daggers? All daggers are throwing. I mean, I only have short swords. So apparently I'm the worst rogue ever. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. Jesus Christ. Well, no, everyone, I'm sure everyone we goes did. Everyone well. some daggers for like eight gold a piece? I think you did. I gold? Or did they all go on 12? I everyone goes on 12. Oh. I think I grabbed some daggers for eight Cassie's gold a piece from you. Because you told me I couldn't find anything magical in my price range. Because I'm poor. You did grab a dagger or two. You have yeah. at least one. I know that. Canathar's you got a really like obnoxiously decorative one, if I remember. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Look yeah, that. had a lady Can I throw it? You, you, you could, you could throw it. I want to throw it. <laughs> Ten. I suggest you do that. I'm gonna throw it. All right. We don't you, know who you these guys are, right? Out of character, we don't know who these guys are. No, no. these are I desert mean, ruffians. We presume. I mean, just but look, we don't know who they look are. Look at their names on roll twenty. I mean, sword guy one, sword guy two, <laughs> captain guy. <laughs> we know their names, but not their story. <laughs> Hey, sword guy one, sword guy two. Get ready. <laughs> I'm on a I want to throw a dagger. <laughs> I told you not real names. Sword guy three. <laughs> well, sword guy three's name is just Guy. Oh. It's true. That's his real name. It, it's Guy. Last name Kay. Man. <laughs> guy Man. I want to throw a dagger at <laughs> Captain Guy. It's not your turn. <laughs> oh. Fuck, I don't know. I assumed since I was the first one to notice them that it was my turn. Nobody Ooh, knows who's Greg. No, you help you helped save us from being innocent Greg. Oh, I, so my turn was Browser. Or adorable. You. <laughs> you 
probably, if you wanted to attack them when they were coming up, you probably could have surprised them. But that would have been a bad choice. Well, especially with, uh, you know, a self roll of three. <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. Look at all the people that go on 12 and 11. <laughs> to rock. Look at that initiative. Is everyone on there? I don't even fucking know. Good, oh, wow. Good luck with this. That. This is going to be fun. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, uh, before we go on with this, um, and this is completely unrelated to everything, um, <laughs> did you guys end up telling Kandara that uh, you, her father had tried to hire you? Probably not. No, no not, not yet. yet. No. Okay. I feel like this may, there, there may be a need for that conversation uh, after this battle. So he said it's unrelated. Also, so. it's, uh, <laughs> I think we can believe him. <laughs> he told us yeah, not to tell you. you. Can I do it? This is going to be on the internet. Check and on you that. Can't lie on the internet. <laughs> so we have the the scout guys are kind of like we have a bow and a small knife. There's a sword lady, kinda, a lady with a sword, kind of in front of them. You got. F- Mace bro here, he's got a big club, he got sword guys, they got like swords, and there's this captain guy with a scimitar and a dagger. Oh, that guy's a dick. And he looks a little grizzled, like, they're all kind of like hardened kind of desert dudes, but like... You can tell he's captain guy. He is, it's very obvious he's captain guy. Okay. He Your gut instincts say he, he is captain guy. Okay. He has a cape. So, they're all fairly lightly armored, um, no one, ha- none, none have shields, um, uh... They're all a little scarred and rough looking. Uh, your gut instincts say, with the help of Metris, Kandara, and her cousins, you can probably take them. Uh, the leader looking guy with the scimitar and dagger says, in a fake, kind of fake friendly voice, to you, listen, guys, don't gotta end with any of us bleeding here. We're not guys. Shut we're up, guys. Captain Guy. <laughs> you, know, you know why we're here. Stand aside and let us have the noble woman. We're flush with coin. <clears throat> from you know who, and it'll be the easiest 500 gold you made. I feel like now's a good time to have that conversation. Just stand aside. <laughs> oh, side note. Can you I know know did tell him. All Don will hear is this. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have 500 gold. Side, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> side note. I did tell him to pay in advance. Up front. Yes. Up front. I do recall this. <laughs> that was a very specific point because I asked about that. <laughs> so they have fat stacks, like they said, believably fat stacks. Is that money on you, or... (laughs) I just want to know for when we kill you and loot your bodies, if you don't walk away from this. Cassius, you're up. Okay. Um, At this point, he pops up from the ground. Um, Gonna make a beeline to the first two guys. These two? Yep. Right there. So it's All of a sudden, the ground shifts beneath you and an arrow comes from off screen. Make a reflex save. Make a reflex save? This is normal. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, oh, damn. <laughs> that was been, fast. You've been in the arena the <laughs> entire time. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's the Matrix. <laughs> it's the tenth round. <laughs> it's the long game. Round 10 is the Oregon Trail, where you set up an expedition into the desert. You have dire dysentery. <laughs> your shotgun explodes on your hands. God damn it. I like that you do health bars, too. I do health bars. Before you uh, I'm spend... Uh, I'm going to attack both those guys. I'm going to spend one of this to re-roll my critical mess. Mm, go ahead. <laughs> Good call. Not much better. Are you attacking Mace Bro or Sword Guy right now? Both. Okay. Short Sword. Oh, okay. Dadger. So the short sword has got okay. his armor. Their armor is twelve, so fourteen, no. and then the other one was nine. Okay. So is are you hitting sword guy four or mace bro? I'm gonna hit sword guy. Okay. How much damage? Uh, Any damage? D8 would be. Six damage. Six damage. I'm also going to use the rest of my movement to kind of move away. Since I made attacks against those two, I'm going to move towards these two over there. So you're going to attack by uh, I made an attack, so this washbucket thing. Oh, that's right, that's right. So you have two squares of movement left. I'm going to move. Holy gas, he's still on 16. Two, Jeez. Right there. Part of the washbucket thing is I get to add my charisma to my. So so Cassius kind of flies in at, at Sword Guy, just gets like one like light chop against him and just veers away and Sword Guy's like, 
What? <laughs> uh, Captain Guy says, you should have taken the money, friends. You really should have. Um, and at that point, it's uh, scouty time. Two of the scouts uh, take shots at Cassius. Oh, this is going to work. Uh, we have a 19 and a 9. That's right. <laughs> uh, Cassius takes... Uh, five... Nope, nope. nope. Uh, six piercing damage. It is, but I just wanted yes. to see if it Critical hit and How's Cassius that? takes 12 damage. Oh, so they're all shooting me? Yes. Okay. You are the only one not behind cover. That's true. <coughs> Everyone else kind of has cover. I probably still have sleep in my eyes. Yes. <laughs> uh, Uriel. Uriel? Is it Uriel or Uriel? I got 9 HP. Sleeping. How do you say it? <laughs> say it for me. I say Uriel. Uriel? I mean, does it really matter though? Yes. Yeah, it does. It's your Uriel. Name. Would potions have been Look, in that? if you guys didn't call Captain Guy Captain Guy, I would be upset and offended that you didn't pay attention to my character. Captain Guy is what I call him. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think oh, his name is actually Guy, Jason. though. You know what I mean? He's Captain Guy. Captain Last guy. name, man. Captain Guy, man. <laughs> the third. Uh, I've been calling him Captain Gay, man. Of the desert, Guy, man. Of. Uh, Uriel. 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 He's really Does our contract wait? Guy? Kandara have Neil? anything to do with protecting her? Guy yes. Damn it. <laughs> we probably take out the scouts then. Rush. Scouts one through four. What's that? We should probably yeah, take yes. out scouts one through four then, yeah. since they have long range weapons. They do have long range weapons. <laughs> That's your initial. But, but, but it's going to take you. So someone should get on that. It's going to take you a full move. <laughs> I'm not there. there. Yeah. It's true. Maybe he has range. You don't know. Not looking too good on that. Unless, well, I mean, <laughs> it, a rogue can get there. What? Get out to the. I guess so. Yeah, because you can, you can use a. Uh, I'll move thirty oh. feet. Yeah, I can. I mean, but you can bonus move action and get there, but then you can stand there. <sighs> what? It, hey guys, just wanted to say hi. <laughs> What's that feature called? I'll stand You're right up in the sword action. lady's face. Dash dodge. Oh, you want or to? Dip, dip dash this, dodge. This is your dip, dip, dash, dash dodge. Can I get to scout one? Dodge. How far was that again? You said dodge twice. <laughs> That's oh, how important it is. Exactly what I wanted to do. Roll twenty. I will go in front of Scout 1. Okay, I was going to move to the corner of the thing there. To where? The one up. <laughs> My cousin Jemba. Okay. Domino's up. So Domino comes up and runs and kind of skirts out here and he kind of peeks out behind. And he sees Uriel run up to these the Scout. And he figures, okay, Uriel's got that scout to the north. And so Donald has his two studs in place, like on his collarbones. So he reaches into his into his little tunic and he channels his magic missile stud. Yes. And he's going to shoot scout two, three, and four. Two, three, and four? Yes. <coughs> doesn't doesn't the stud roll go first? Oh. <clears throat> yep. To make sure he doesn't die? Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to roll my damage. That can happen. I forgot that. <laughs> People can just die when they use magic. Uh, People can uh, super live if they use magic. Is, ah! is that a thing? <laughs> the stud uses a 7th level spell well. slot. What? It stud casts. uses a 7th level spell slot? Yes. <laughs> it's 1d4 per spell slot above. <laughs> It's three so initially, I guess six and then more. Yes. <laughs> Do you have six more on you? So I guess I'm just gonna use three against each one. You got a ninety-nine. Good <laughs> 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 Just start bones. whipping them out. So yeah, I'll, I'll just so three, three, and three then. Okay. Uh, so the f scout two, I deal. Uh, why is this 
so. Not anything actually called super. Just. Hey. I don't remember the effects. Uh, 11? There's 100 different. Scout 2? Yeah, he rolls. Right. He rolls it. There's not like areas. Scout 3 takes. Maybe. Okay. There might be he a rolled. Few, there's 100 different Nine? things that could happen. Yeah. Okay. You have 100 different chances. Scout 4 takes. <laughs> high is good. 11. Usually. <clears throat> 100 could be That's zero. <laughs> you hear Scout 2 yell, HOLY FUCKING SHIT! <laughs> <laughs> well, what a great introduction to studs. <laughs> so, and, and then Domino ducks no, back in behind the, behind the wagon. <laughs> and Jacob's version. Awesome. Are so they still alive? That. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, chew through half his health, but yeah. Um, the three cousins, uh, sensing weakness on the part of Scout 2, uh, leverage their short bows. And what are their stats? There's so many things going on in this stupid fight. Kandara, your cousins have plus five to hit. Ah! I'm gonna critical hit. So that would be. Uh, Jace. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So one of Kandara's cousins puts an arrow through uh, alcohol, <laughs> Scout Number Two's face. He alternates. Energy drink, liquor. That's a good way to die. Hey, chew me open a bottle. Hmm? I need you to chew me open a bottle. That's a mess. I was gonna say it's chewing. Uh, Scout Number Two uh, is I'm dead. Do it later. Scout Two is dead. Okay. Uh, cousin uh, Cousin Jumbo got blood. a crit on him. Uh, Scout 3 <clears throat> took an arrow, but isn't terribly inconvenienced. Uh, it's now Metris' turn. What does Metris do? Metris. I give encouraging words to Jumba. <laughs> uh, Metris <coughs> takes a, I think it's a dodge maneuver, uh, action, dodge action. Um, and then it's Captain's guy. He's like, this Captain guy. Guy's turn. Ooh, Captain Guy. He's gonna go for you. Captain Guy's for going. <laughs> Kandara's not fighting? I don't know. I'm right in front of him. Oh, never mind. I, yeah, I, I'm sorry. You're I, right. You already advanced it. My bad. Could be. You're right. <coughs> we got uh, guys over there to worry where's about. Where's the RTD guy? That's an actual. Herber. Captain oh, Guy rolls up him. to Metris. Is that the old guy, right? Yes. Attacks with a scimitar oh, and dagger. This is my guy. <laughs> That's why there's an assassin right here. We have Wait, that, is that an over exaggeration? Or does he have six? He, he actually has six in oh, one no. in the city. Oh, we haven't God. decided if that's what transfers into the deep desert. It does. That's 11 <laughs> no, I, it, it, He just hurts a lot more. Or less. He has six or less. <laughs> fewer? Uh, many. Yeah, it's Technically, it would be fewer because you know the amount. Exactly. It's That's hard to know that word. Thank you. Oh, fuck you guys. They're so pedantic. It's so no, weird it's that you're attracted <laughs> to the fact that you just set, like, differentiate. Captain Guy gets a good hit on Metris with his dagger, but Metris shrugs away the scimitar with his shield. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kandara's turn. Less weird now. She Metris sees Metris, Metris too, right? in danger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Metris is an old badass. So technically, an old Greg badass. would know it's to say fewer. But Yui would say less. Kandara gets a hit on the captain guy with her Yui's bow. Yui's sexy. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh. And now it's Yui's turn. Oh, it barely did anything. Feel... Yui! You can throw a dagger now. I want to throw a dagger at captain guy. Do it. And also, oh yeah. So I start with that. <clears throat> Roll your d Roll sneak attack. Okay. <coughs> your dagger is dagger. Because yep, I can do it when you yeah, shoot for 12. Shoot. So, well, because there's no eyes within. I, I'll read it just to be sure. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Go, go ahead. I had I'll a sneak it out. It'll be your dex plus your dex modifier. So plus 4. So okay. to hit. Plus proficiency, right? I rolled a 4. So that'd be plus 8. 2d6. You rolled a 4. So it'll be 8 to hit. Okay. Yeah. Well, I threw a dagger, rolled an 8 Three. to hit. I rolled a 4 plus 4 dex modifier. So that's gonna mess. Problem. I believe he said we're shooting for twelve, and Captain Guy might even be able to lie. <laughs> yeah, you I don't say. I woke up two and a half hours before my alarm. Yeah, I don't remember what I had. 
be really bad. And then I can win my sleep. 10 20. Say you woke up at a normal time. Actually, 10 20 is kind of normal. I was going to say it was. So I got. I was really disappointed. I had the strangest sleep schedule this semester. Because on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I have school all day, and I have... There was nothing special about that my first class decorative at dagger I had. It was just decorative. So I can't even, like, just go to my 8 a.m. and get <laughs> back to bed. So you were missed. No, it's but then on Eight Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have no, no class. <laughs> oh, it wasn't that much? So no. I no. usually oh. sleep in the I think it was, like, nine vision. copper. So yeah. it's very strange. Oh, yeah. It was copper value. I remember that. I thought it was silver. It doesn't matter. Either way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I no longer have So you have missed. Okay. Do you want to move anywhere? You can move. Yes. I am there. It's positioning is key. What? Yeah, 30 I'm feet. I'm like the days 30 feet. And it's square. It wouldn't even be five. that bad. Five feet? I know. It'd be like a two hour difference. It wouldn't even be that bad waking up at eight. And I probably I'm could wake up like earlier. Because I, mean, I have an advantage. Watch, but but next just, like, there's no right? point. I'm, no. Doing, I'm doing nothing all day. Behind him, though, I have a. I was wrong. Are you doing play Euros Clint? I'm the same one as Okay. So, yeah, if you got here, he would. So I could go there, have an advantage. Because I I believe one of my. This coming from the guy who I know. Is that what you want to do then? Yes. All the time. And. and you yes, you would get so your late. sneak attack damage bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sleeping more. If he's still alive, I hear. If I'm still alive, yes. Yeah. Anything else, Yui? I think that's it. Turok. Turok. Turok's going to stand up. Get moving. And he is going to move towards Captain Guy. Can I get, how far can I get, I guess? You I can, can get definitely 30. get to him. Yeah, you can get right up on him. <clears throat> 5, 10, 15, 20, and you still have 10 feet of movement after that. Could I go on this side of him? Yeah. If that's okay? Yeah. And then I am going to, I can't, I can't keep moving because then he'll attack me. So I'll attack him. That's what I'll do. I rolled a 15 to hit with my spear, and I got hits. 14 damage. I stab at thee. 14? I did. At a boy, Turok. Boom. Kind of I'm eager to prove myself after not being seen in the game. Kind of tries to interpose his sword a little bit. <coughs> Maybe keep it from spiking a kidney, but he still takes a hit. I winged him. You know, that's why I threw a dagger, and I fucked up. Alright. Alright, sword guy two. Sword guy two comes up behind Yui. Uh-oh. He has advantage on you. Yes, I do. Sword guy two gets something like twenty one versus AC. Oh yeah, fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you we take six uh, piercing damage. Sword guy one okay. comes at you. Oh no! <laughs> I will use my stun. Okay. He gets a nineteen yeah, versus AC turn. against you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That hits. Yeah, he takes another yeah, six hopefully. piercing damage. Well, I got I, I got the healing word one. But... Yeah. <clears throat> Mace bro comes up behind Turok. Hits a uh, twenty-one versus AC against yeah, Turok. <coughs> Turok <coughs> takes uh, six bludgeoning to the back with a mace. Clint, on my turn, I have a question for you. Okay. Here's Important for me. Sword guy four comes at Cassius. Gets I, I don't fifteen versus sixteen. No question. This is just so you know. Just so sword guy three comes up behind Turok. Gets a fifteen versus <coughs> sixteen against Turok. Seventeen. His AC 16. is nice. Seventeen. Yep. Seventeen. I'm good. Right. Yeah. That's, That's why he was right there. AC. Sword guys. Sword guys. The only reason. Kevin, get with it, man. We got the so wet race still. Sword Lady comes up on Cassius. Gets a 16. Just hits. Cassius no! takes six slashing damage. Alrighty. Are you down? <coughs> no, not yet. Close. Canathar. Okay. You can heal yourself and then I'll also. Yeah. Okay. On my. Who else has the healing on, rune rune? <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> on my disarming attack feature, it uh. says when you hit a creature with a weapon. Does that mean that if I don't pass the. Attack roll, then it doesn't spend the superiority down. Correct. Okay. You have to actually hit the. Okay. Spend it. <coughs> um, I expected the shots. Ah. 
I'm gonna. Are you? What? Right here. Oh. I'm going to run up to. Right. Oh, oh, oh if I go there, I'm gonna. I'll go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll go here. Out of the Up to Sword Guy One, I think. Okay. I can't see the one. But I'm seeing that. And then I'm going to. OG Sword Guy. It wasn't. <laughs> <totally didn't mean. laughs> Um, I'm going to hit him. Oh my god. No, you're not. No, He's I'm not, not going to hit him. I'm going to... You lie. Get a if, if you move... Natural one. If you move here, instead of here, you'll have advantage. Oh. <coughs> Maybe that's what you did. What a... What a... That's what you DM. did. What a, what a DM. What a DM. What a dick oh, master. I just rolled a one it. again. <laughs> that's insane. I mean, it's... That's Critical like, miss. That means you die. Yeah, the container. <laughs> Thank you. I'll keep yeah. my dice in there. Another it was one. another natural one. <laughs> okay. You know, if you move here, you can damage again. <laughs> Canathar's initiative drops to... Nine. N not ne negative, nine. negative nine. <laughs> wow. Nine. Wow. And the next attack on him has advantage. That sucks. So back at the top That's of the nice jail. I'm going to spend... Uh, Okay. It, oh, look! Okay, it word. was almost okay. a one. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> okay. it's a was it two? So it was bonus action. Well, it's not said, order. So it's not um. I'll do that. It's oh, not yeah. a roll down die. It's random, okay. but it was right next to the one. Yeah, I got it. it was a seven. Seven. <laughs> seven. That's seven. good news for you, Cassius. Yeah. Uh, it uses a third level spell slot. Third level spell slot. Ooh. So. Well done, well done. Each. So far, we haven't been screwed by <laughs> studs. I cannot wait so to die. So far, studs have been great. I can't wait to die. It's going to be awesome. We didn't have any negative effects when we were in the nope. arena either, did we? No, you missed... You, I think, think There were some fairly neutral ones. Kevin rolled like one point outside of the bad things start to happen range. Right. There's, like, there's probably like a neutral that? range in the middle, right? Yeah, there's a very wide neutral range where nothing strange happens. They just work like as that. intended. <laughs> And it uses it, it's your wisdom? Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. <coughs> so, so there's not a hundred unique effects. We are okay. arguing. Well, that I'm going to do that. And then I'm going the magic to chart for uh, Hecano is like that, where there are a hundred unique effects that range from boring to insane. Yeah. I'm going to make an attack on uh, him as well. Who? The sword guy. Sword guy. Or actually, I have advantage on... Nice bro. Nice bro. Mm -hmm. Thanks, bro. The guy I like that you yet. trust me enough, Clint, to let me move enemies. What's that? I like that you trust me enough to move enemies. I, I found this weird thing where if I didn't mark them as all, like the, the nameplates weren't showing up for players. You have to go in and check show nameplate. I did. And you have to go into the advanced tab Four. and hit show name, check show name. I didn't do that. But Can you <coughs> check show name when nameplate is... So I see how you did the nameplate X. Nameplate check is shown. <coughs> what, what I just started doing... Has that been changing? Oh, I can't see. I can't change that much. Okay, if you go into settings, like on your side, you can tint them, and I tint them red. Oh. <coughs> and I leave them on there as difficult to. damage to Mace Bro? Yeah. When they're dead? Yeah. I like that. <coughs> can you hide certain enemies' health Mace, bars and Mace Bro is looking yep. that's, that's as if you cool. maybe chopped apart half his health. Or Lightning. a third of his health. Excuse me. Lightning. He's bloody. He's bloody. Scout time! Volley of arrows. There are three scouts. Oh, there were four. You're welcome. There were four. <laughs> uh, and scout, there's almost two. Scout one moves back a couple steps. Uh, Yuri, Uriel, Uriel, Uriel gets an attack of opportunity against scout one. Kill him. Do it. I take that attack. Wisdom, we add to that. Wisdom. Yeah. Are you looking okay now? Still pretty pinned up. 3d4 plus wisdom. Yeah, I don't have that high of a wisdom. No. The only reason I took the, the only reason I took the other one was because I had luck points. Ah, that's a seven. <coughs> oh, you have dual wisdom, so you get plus two on damage. Yeah, those are great. So nine damage. I'm seven still below half, but I'm not as bad as I was. <laughs> Seventeen to hit, nine damage. All right, cool. That hurts him a little bit. But then he fires two arrows at your face. And he gets, he gets a nine and a seven. Those both hit. <laughs> Awful, I see. 
Scout <coughs> Lee uh, uses multi attack to shoot two arrows at Uriel. Uriel. Gets a 21 and an 11. Six piercing damage. That one hits. Does the 11? No. <laughs> Scout Oliver four. Four. <laughs> I have luck points. I can spend them on death saving throws. I'm gonna save you. I don't want you to finish him, but I. I've never seen anybody do die it. in D and D. Do it. Okay. <laughs> no, because your eels the the present threat right in the face of the scouts, <clears throat> and they're very lightly armored. Twenty one and sixteen versus AC. Both, both hit. Both hit. Both hit. Twelve piercing damage. Officer, we gotta do Because if I drop down, I, I, I'm I, prepared. Correct. Now it's Uriel's turn. Uriel's turn. Uriel. Uriel's turn. Uriel. Uriel. Turn him to stone. Uriel. Use the Fury card. Turn him to stone. That was the Uriel card. I remember it was five feet <laughs> to scout three. Yeah, Uriel. Okay. Uriel. Swing yeah, Uriel. on him. You gotta move ten. Is that okay? One that only you five? We did have a good time with fourth edition. Was I back there? Yeah, yeah you were there. Oh, five, okay, ten. yeah. Plus, <coughs> if you look at my name, please. Yeah, that's fine. Like, wow. I wish you could put it like, across the center. Yeah, that'd be. 19 to hit? Yes. Oh, that damage again. Had I not been boxed in, I would have had it over that way. Scout 3. So, no. Oh, Scout 3 goes down. Down oh. goes Frazier! Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anything else? Nah, that's it. I like when you put it, when you drop yeah. a five negative hit points, the, the life bar starts going fighter. out the back. You fight him? You're gonna fashion serve your second wind. To heal, if you need it. Stop. Do you see what I do is like, here, I'll put him back. I just, if you type like this, like, are you second just typing like, like this? Plus your fighter level. Minus 13. Yeah. Yeah. Let me check. Oh, he's I dead too. Right oh, we're all fighting. You a real guy? Can you no. read my hand? Can you oh, the scout? I see. All right, gotcha. <coughs> Next, <coughs> looking, at, looking at the labels wrong. That was my you bad. second win. Before oh. my turn. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> George You poor <laughs> bastards. <laughs> was it a one? It, it yeah. was a walk. You know that? No. So that's four health, though. Fine. Yeah. If I die, I'm coming back as a bear totem barbarian. Okay. That's my character portrait. Oh, my. Oh, my. All right. So your reel's done? Yep. Okay. All right. Donald's up. So Donald's going to let your reel worry about those guys now. And he's going to come up behind Sword Lady. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Trying to give her a good wallop. Yeah, with his a stats. wallop. <laughs> yeah, I think is. she has a lightsaber. Well, I hope not. <laughs> hey, look at that. Good hits. Uh, 21 to hit. That hits. Uh, uh, four damage. You're old. <coughs> that happens. You're old. She seems perplexed by the fragility of the blow. I'm bracing for him, bag. This she feels example. a kiss from a butterfly. That's my turn. Okay. Uh, it's the cousin's turn. It's sting like a bee, not sting like a butterfly. Sting like a beater fly. <laughs> sting like a beater fly. Float like a butterfly sting. All like three of them miss as they try to pin down Scout One. But now it's Metris' turn. He is especially dexterous. Metris takes a swing at the captain guy. Fucking damn it. Metris gets a critical failure. Oh no, that because he had advantage. Okay. Well, at least if my stud explodes, I'm in the middle of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the last person to hit Captain Guy? It was Yui, right? Yeah. Uh, captain Guy turns. Uh, <coughs> No, he doesn't. Out with the wrong way. He turns the wrong he way. He lashes out with his scimitar at Yui, which he has advantage against. Oh, no. Uh, does a... It might hit. It, it 
combat. If it's above 15. Uh, to say 18 or 19 hit. Yeah. Okay. Both hit. <coughs> if you're wondering. Uh, Yubi takes six slashing damage. So much. And then he comes back around with his dagger. And that hits. And he takes another five piercing damage. Are you hurting? I am at four HP. But it's okay. That's only out of 27. Remember, guys, healing spells that are unlimited are going completely <laughs> unbalanced gameplay. Have you taken your exhaustion level yet? <clears throat> what? You now have disadvantage oh, on yeah. on ability checks, on ability which are skills. Checks. Awesome. For doing what? Because you drop below you half health. Yep. <clears throat> you get a level of exhaustion. That's ability checks, though. Awesome. That's what you get. Don't worry, it ah. goes away when you get back to, to uh... Clint. Look, I can. I have the exhaustion chart on my. Nice. Very nice. What level I'm at? Wow, that's fantastic. So Kandara yeah. fires an arrow, it's got yeah, one, and it misses. Yeah, so but that's not as that's not as like engaging sure. to me. Oh, it's my turn. Awesome. Don't die. Anything to not die. It's a bold move. You can take a disengage action and run the fuck away. Yeah, you probably should do that. Go hide behind the curve. Should I? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's better than death. We will not think less of you Wait. at all. <laughs> Um, Make sure you're in sight of me. Levels of when, exhaustion on I'm right the, here. On in sight of you. Well, I was going to go, because I can heal you. <coughs> to, um, let's see, I'm trying to, I am here. Right. At least yep. give you some I was going to go to here. Yeah, 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 right there. You can get there. You're not going to take an attack of opportunity? No, you're inside of scout one, though. I, I have a chance at that. Again, I've done that before. I apologize completely. You can take the disengage <coughs> action, which when you when you oh, run away from yeah. an enemy, they get an attack of opportunity oh. on you, which you if can you take leave a disengage there. action, so they don't. But that means you don't get an attack. Right. Oh, uh, because you're using yeah. your action to make so, sure oh, you, yeah, they yeah. can't hit you. You're using your you know your your movement to block. Well, at four HP, I'm gonna go ahead and take. Yeah, it. it's, <laughs> it's the right move. That is the, it's the right move. That's awesome. the safe play. It's the right move. Awesome. 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 Turok. Turok. <clears throat> um, Greg, can you grab me a uh, liney? Absolutely. <coughs> His friend <coughs> 34 in uh, danger. Yeah. You, mind if I grab it? you mind if I grab it? The 20 ounce? You're healing yeah. him? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and thanks. What? Yeah, I'm going to um, follow and him and try to heal uh, him. Okay. Another one? I'd love to yeah, do that. Okay. Oh, I'm at, I heard that means. One. What do I do? Uh, <laughs> How well, about, are, are you looking to cast a spell this turn? <laughs> yes. So you're just going to run away? If you run away from the That's two, you're right. That's three attacks of opportunity. Oh, my. I slept my oh whole weekend away. My. Yeah, that's So I'm going <laughs> to... It's only Saturday. <coughs> Disengage. 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 And then leave. Disengage. Okay. And then I'll just go over near him. Okay. You got to get your... Canine in one of the the little hooks and just kind of. Greg, you're gonna fucking twist up. No, don't. It's really not that hard. It's all the sword guys' turns. Is this for me? Glad I got out of there. What? I. It was for you or Turok. Uh, does a twenty-one hit Canathar? I'm I'm still working on the first one. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Does twenty-one hit Canathar? It's not near as yes. as I thought it would be. By the Six way. Six piercing damage. Okay. What do you got? What's that? Oh, it's just Captain Ammo. <laughs> Captain Guy. There you go, DM. Don't kill me. Attacks Metris. I can't heal you. With his you scimitar. Healed me? Not yet. Oh. I was like, Metris I'm is looking a little rough. <clears throat> Possibly blow half hit points. Metris? Metris. One of the guys were with. Kandar's guard. I think, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I shouldn't have done that. Can't Wait, we Captain Guy already went. <clears throat> Who? Did he go yet? Captain Guy. Yeah, he attacked you before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm getting confused about yeah. order. Twice. He did. He a lot. Like a little bitch. I think you added it to the <coughs> wrong person. He hit me twice a lot. I <laughs> 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 <Plant. Which laughs> health back to Captain Guy when you meant to add it to the Oh, yeah. Thanks, Joyce. No problem. Did he mean to do that? Did I? The desert is a strange place. Did I do that? <laughs> so, Sword Guy 3 moves up to Metris and attacks him. 
That is an 11. That does not hit Petrus. Uh, Mace Bro. Takes a swing at Petrus. Misses. <coughs> uh, Sword Lady takes a swing at Cassius. Yeah, because I'm a little bitch. That's fine. Sorry. I uh, tried. Does a 19, 19 does hit you? <coughs> 19 does. Sword lit. Six slashing damage <laughs> against Cassius. Yep. Sword Which guy attacks Domino. 24. Just barely. Just, uh, just barely. Yeah, it just him. grazes me. Uh, <coughs> takes six piercing damage. I think I... Yeah, I already went from Ace Bro. Sword lady. And... Oh, Domino's been hit. Canathar's turn. Yes, it is. <laughs> um. <coughs> what if I still get one sword guy too? I'm going to. You cast the stud. He or you say you're using a stud, and then he attempt to hit sword rolls. guy one. Okay. Hmm. It's a two. <laughs> What's your so plus? Is your plus eleven? It's plus eight. Or pl no, plus six. So eight after oh. the pack. I'm pretty sure it misses. Mm. Action surge. If you want to hit somebody bad, I you used action surge last time, didn't you? No, I had advantage because you used four was right. We well, used action surge last time. What? No, he used his, his second wind. You used your second wind. Yeah. Okay. I use my action surge. Good news is we're going to sleep after we win. <laughs> Does a twelve hit? Yeah. Okay, sweet. He did it. He did it. <laughs> oh yeah, we did it. Um, Chase, you're notorious for not hitting things. I am. Wait, <laughs> did you miss last week? Tell that girl I met last week. Did you ask me? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. It feels bad. Sorry, did you hear about that girl in the bath house, bath house with him? <laughs> didn't hit that either. I got a one on my D8. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, seven damage? To sword guy one? Yeah. That is more than zero damage. That is more than zero that damage. That is more than zero damage. You have made an appreciable impact on the fight. And then I'm going to... Use you guys started out so strong with that, like, ninth level. <laughs> Are you, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna use use spend attack, a spend right? a superiority die okay. to use Rally on Yui 4. Yui? Is that right? Yui 4? Yeah, absolutely. Yui? Okay. Is that um, a D? I think that's an no. D8, right? Yeah. I so, yeah. A D8. A s you heal, f or you gain nine temporary hit points. <clears throat> so temporary hit points don't stack, but I don't think you have to worry about it. So. No. Yeah, you'll have you lose your, and you lose your nine hit points before you lose your other hit points. It, there's yes. like a certain a number of rounds where they eventually wear off. But okay. yeah, for for most combats, they'll probably be there for the whole time. I need like what? ten. He has nine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh shit. Cassius. Cassius. Um, <laughs> how many people? Enemies are around me. There's three. There's all three. kinds of enemies for you. No spinning attack. Whirlwind strike. Um, Whirlwind strike. Oh, I didn't, I didn't take uh, Ranger. Um, how are the, how are the people around me looking health wise? I know the ones below. Uh, one's been touched. One's been touched, one's been touched, and one's been touched. They're all pretty good though. They're all like above three quarters, I'd say, or at three quarters. Mace guy's looking the lowest, so the one closest to us. I'm gonna have to. Um, <coughs> this fight would be a lot easier if you guys had a seven person. I'm just saying. Yeah. Damn Stop you, Dave! Dave. <coughs> oh, my buddy Jack filled in for Dave. That's a gym. Damn it. I drink like a I, commoner. <laughs> ah, Jim Daniels. I gotta heal myself again. <laughs> Jack B. Yeah. Well, I lost all respect for Mila Kuna, so. 90. It's a job fucking damn it. Jim B. Not the Jack B. Let's go. Oh. Don't worry. Third level slot. Don't get to kill me. Okay. I'm excited. Third level okay. slot. Nice. Witness me. Your mom's a third level slot. Oh, shit. <laughs> Like an action and then disengage action. Clear. 
I'm yeah. kind of confused a little bit on how exactly. As a bonus, you know how they were saying if I would have like, tried yeah. to attack and then left, yeah. I could have done both. Like, I know it's, it's like, again, the first one, yeah. when you're at half, yes. no, that's fine. if you I, go to, like, I a quarter think. max health, no. you get in the second one. It's just okay. below half. Okay. Okay. And then you gain more levels if you start failing death saves. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to stab uh, the sword person behind me. Sword lady? You stab yeah. it, thief. Get her! You have advantage. Because I'm not. I crit. <coughs> Let's finish the bitch off. Um, four. <coughs> four, six. Did not put a pet down on a guy. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <Clock laughs> <in that> <laughs> 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 Seventeen. Action movement, yeah. Plus nine would be twenty-six. Twenty-six damage? No. That's the most damage I've seen yet. And Outside of Kevin's all of those. She's barely hanging on. If Kevin does four more damage, she'll probably die. <laughs> okay. 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 How is okay. your initiative? Oh, I mean, I guess you're a rogue. I, I must. Maybe maybe her attention is on Domino for a moment, but you get in there and just fucking carve a chunk out of her kidney. Oh god. Okay. It's okay. She's got two. <laughs> She's barely hanging on. Is it kidneys that you have two? Yes. 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 <laughs> I also have two spleens. And <coughs> two lungs. <coughs> you have two lungs. I have two testicles. <laughs> Still. It's got one and two <coughs> uses, So that's fine. Aren't those two dead? No, no. You're real? I keep murdering those so. pussies. <laughs> Am I a true Franken student? You went to Reese. Yeah. Oh, my bad. You guys don't murder those pussies. I shall attack Scout 4. Okay. You need down to Scout 4. That's not what your sister said. Oh, oh she was also from Frankenmood. She went to Reese. For two years. Cows. <laughs> Ten damage. Uh, <laughs> Twenty-one to hit. Twenty-one to hit. Okay. Ten damage. <laughs> Ten damage. Oh, he's barely hanging on. Oh. Just Use barely. Your action surge. Just we. Use thing. your action surge to deal one more damage to him. <laughs> <laughs> you spit in his eye. <laughs> yeah, spit in his eye. I'll, I'll do it because I only have. Uh, I guess whatever. I'll be He's gonna get to attack you again before you come around. Think of it this way: if you action search now, you'll have your whole turn next turn to do whatever the fuck you yeah. want. Yeah, fine. That's true. And then you can come up and wait. Get are you on is that his health? Sword guy four. <laughs> That's his health. Thank God. <laughs> you you have you would have advantage. Like on sword guy four. I have seventeen now. Good. So I'll be alright. Finish him. Round one. I use an action. Okay. I hope you hit. I hit him. Okay. Eleven. And then eleven. <laughs> Any non-zero number. Eleven damage. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to alarm you, but Scout Four is dead. Oh. <gasps> Negative health. <coughs> is that what I see? Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, he felt back and away from you in case you were Domino. wondering. So, Domino uh, <clears throat> kind of tucks his staff underneath his arm and makes an attempt to grab her hair, pull it back, and cast Magic Missile into her face. Joke <laughs> what? So he's a joke face. I'm too tired to do it. That's like one of my favorites. It's good or bad. Similar to one of my favorite probably. I need Domino to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, this one, this one I made a I'm a lead. Something that wasn't proof for like 200 more years. You are at zero hit points, and you fall over unconscious. Oh my. But you get the spell off. this page. the spell of it. Well, that's good. And then Silver lining is like 200 years. That is true. I know it's pretty good one for me. <laughs> I'm honestly sneaking out. But I'm uh, so you guys all see uh, Domino grab this chick by the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, am I interrupting you guys? A little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking first. Okay. No, we'll go, on. go on. We'll wait. <laughs> we'll let you. We'll let you take it. Thank you. So you guys see Domino grab this chick and fire a magic missile into her face, 
And then all of a sudden, it's like he's having a seizure and his eyes roll back and he starts foaming at the mouth and he just falls over. Mm. And just starts seizing. Great. Mm. Now I have to make a decision. <laughs> well, I've already been approved nine special for points. Nine. <laughs> Temporary. Yeah, I've run all the way over there. I'm I just like special all around this better than temporary. <laughs> Did you spend your last turn to heal anybody? So it's no, the cousin's I went turn over there to get him. I had to disengage. <laughs> uh, uh, I got. I can get Kevin. Sorry. Hey, one of them gets a crit against the uh, shit storm one. too. So I feel bad. What's that? Oh, I, it's because I moved in when I shouldn't have. I, mean, I should have shot uh, first. Shoot first. Mm. This is the first time I've ever played a rogue, and it's kind of different. Remember, <laughs> no rush. <13. coughs> oh, I can't believe there was an option to turn that mission off. Metris the turn. Was it because it's kind of a yeah, a little uh, distasteful? Yeah, a little distasteful. Possibly. <laughs> you know, it's all about crowds. Yeah. And that was like during the big like video games make people murderers. Yeah. Sure I remember. No gets a hit against the captain guy. <laughs> Literally like I have 60. Oh, captain so guy takes some swings at Metris. <coughs> and misses Metris. Yes. Ah, uh, oh agile Metris. If Domino <laughs> was uh, uh up to root him on, he would. Kandara uh, <laughs> takes a mom. shot at Scout you One. Yes, he's him looking pretty ragged. <laughs> and misses, and now it's Yui's turn. Yui, awesome. Yui. <laughs> and I'm back up to But you, I, I just want to point out that Herber is way in the back, hiding behind that wagon. And, like, he's got his club, his cane held up by, like, it's a bat. But it's this really ornate, like, polished piece of wood that's really slender and has, like, a little metal nub on the end. It would clearly shatter the second he struck someone again with it. Fan. Yes. Okay. If I remember right, he's decked out in studs, isn't he? No. No? I thought he was. I mean, he doesn't have a shit ton on him. He's got like three. Oh, I thought he had a lot more studs Ooh. than that. Herbert. Herbert. Okay. So, <coughs> could oh, I get... No, it was the king. Can I still get an advantage the on Captain king Guy? Uh, uh, yeah, you'd be putting yourself at disadvantage. That's true. If you go right down in there... Can I go on the other side of uh, Canathar and get... But then the captain will get you. Yeah. Uh, Where are you? Same thing, then you're going to... No, no, I'm No, because you're still in his melee range, so you don't take an opportunity. opportunity. No, you don't take an opportunity attack, but you still... Here, by Canathar. I mean, that's not the worst place to be, but you won't get out or advantage. Yeah, you won't. Okay. Yeah, you are still kind of low, aren't you? I I have or 13 feel as well. Here is the only place you I'm have advantage yeah, with Canathar. I, 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 I wouldn't do that. I would run up to him. Yeah, like here, me. but here you have advantage against either one of these, but you also have disadvantage mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. Sword Guy too. Yeah. I don't have much going on for me. It's true. Outside of my class features. Keep in mind, if you have advantage on a roll, you can use your sneak attack as a rogue, which is more damage. Oh, Wait, you'd well, have you'd have a you'd have I a sneak attack on sword guy action. one if, if you go right here. No, if he moves yeah. here, because there just has to be another person in adjacent. No, well, Clint's rule might be different. That's no, that's a, that's the general. That's the flanking rule. His is but within for sneak five attack, feet. if there's a attack. person within five, he has feet, to have an ally within you five can use feet. Sneak attack as a bonus action. As a rogue. Yeah. Well, there you go. As long as that works. Yeah. Yeah, the rogue rules say that if you have an ally within five feet. So I will go up. Perfect. Sort of Let's see. Let me double check. Don't go there. Don't go there. Go here. Yeah, go, go here. there. Hundred percent. Yeah. You got sneak right. attack. If and then have. I would use sneak attack, which is <coughs> roll the hit first. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I should have taken healing word instead of so cure he wounds. has. Oh, uh, they only have. Wait, no. what is it? What'd you roll? I two. Oh, I couldn't tell if it was a two or seven. And then I. Uh, what do you guys want to do? I've been using the flanking rule as you have to be on opposite sides. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I, that's that's I wasn't using that rule that you just had to be next to another person, and it fucked up my game. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. It, it makes it super easy. To yes. Become. It also takes a lot away from the rogue itself. Like and it true. completely invalidates uh, creatures with the pack yep, tactics. It does. Feature. That is something that has occurred to me. <coughs> All right. So I'm good using that. Like it's one mm -hmm. thing in Pathfinder, sneak it's something else. Well, yeah, but fourth. you missed. Yeah, nice. you're good to use a sneak attack, yeah. 
Because general play. I mean, I got a two with a plus yeah, one, plus ten, plus six. So oh. they have twelve. Yeah. So yeah. I, that's my third six, which are the only things I've thrown tonight. <laughs> so I've rolled three times. Turok, I would like to get to Domino. Okay. Can I do it? Uh. Over the over the thing. Can you like you want to jump on top of the wagon? It might be difficult. Can I slide under it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I try it? Would be a better question. Roll. I really want to hear this. I mean, if he's trying well, to heal, what if I go forward like a baseball player? If you go out like your hands glowing, like to heal him. <laughs> Sliding hands first. <laughs> Safe. Uh, can you do the ruler right up to the corner, like the, the first square of the wagon for me? As in this one? No, the probably this one, right? Yeah, that one. Twenty. I can move thirty. How far do you have to be to use? Well, if I get to this one, I can technically hit him. If that, you if he'll allow me to be there. He's the. It's probably. He's the gray. Well, because you're right. <coughs> oh, oh I yeah. thought you were an X. My bad. No. Yeah. Oh. The, the only I can't, the thing I can think of is dropping prone to go under the wagon. I'll act, I'll action surge. I'm willing to do that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Turok. Yeah, that's the only way I can think of that's doing fair. it. Because like there, it's. I mean, it's not like it's greased up under the wagon and you can just belly slide across to, <laughs> to slide into home on Domino. What's it's, that? It's, it's sun dirt, baked right? sand. sand yeah. it's, it's baked sand. Pretty sand. What is a baseball diamond made of? Well, yeah, but it's pretty light. So solid. with my action surge, sand. I'll use my one to throw a spear and then I'll use my second action, right? Because you get a double movement as well. You no, get another you movement just, and another, you get another full turn, right? Like you just get another action. You get an extra action. Bits of sun action. Baked, okay, then uh, I'll just move twice Razor heal. glass. Okay. That's Everywhere. Awesome. Alright, so I want to use my stud. <laughs> so I'll cure wounds. <laughs> Hopefully, use my stud. Don't kill me. Wait, that was not guy. I mean, th this is the desert. <clears throat> I would imagine that somewhere along the desert there is like sun baked razor glass everywhere. <laughs> Little pieces of it. Were you drawing Triforce Prism? Everything works fine. Hey! Mm -hmm. Was it you, Jacob? So that's a D8 plus something? Wisdom. 30, right? D8 plus 30? Wisdom modifier. I think that's how that roll works. I Wisdom think modifier. I did hear that. Wisdom <laughs> modifier, not awesome, but not terrible. Oh god, I missed. Eight plus two. Yes. <laughs> Domino seizure stops. His eyes flutter open, and he goes. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> did the missile and he hit her? <laughs> and he doesn't want to say it, but he shit his pants. <laughs> you can totally tell. I was like, can you smell this? No one's saying. Can you smell? What Tarak is cooking? <laughs> oh, good round for Tarak. I'd like to say it probably he does probably doesn't know it until he tries to stand up and good guys. Bring me my brown <laughs> pants. <laughs> Sword guy four is like, hey, Domino's back up. <laughs> Chop. Of course he is. <laughs> he crit, didn't he? No, I got a seventeen. Well, oh, yeah, that hits. My old man physique. Take sixteen. <laughs> How much? Six piercing damage. Okay, I thought he said 16. I'm like, oh, I'm That's what I thought he said. I was like, holy sh... How are you looking at on HP, Kevin? I'm holy crit. <laughs> Is a man a total of four? Okay. Um, Guys, just kill shit, okay? Sword guy wanted studs. to go after Kanathar. I have a stud. I can bonus action with him because I'm feeling worried. I can still kill shit. 19 and, and 22 versus Kanathar. Which we probably should have taken piercing damage. Word all I don't know why I held up two. Three wounds. But you took twelve. Well, I saw the one. Twelve. It was like <laughs> two well. You were you were doing sign language like twelve. Uh, sword guy three. Sword guy three. Tries for Metris. Doesn't do it on Metris. Uh, Mace bro. Mace bro. Oh, sword lady's dead. Can someone miss an attack? On yeah, me? sword lady's dead. No shit. Mace bro comes at Cassie's. And gets a 19. Mm -hmm. And Cassie takes six uh, bludgeoning damage. Just hits. <laughs> How bad are we looking? How As looking? a team. As a team, we're looking pretty beat the fuck up. You should just cast more spells. That's all you need. You have unlimited healing, guys. I need to just hit an attack. Yeah, Cassie's spells were great for me, guys. <laughs> oh, 
I, I got know. hit for 22 points. It's all right. I have the feeling <laughs> that if we all went know. unconscious because of dying because of spells, we would just end up in a prison somewhere. I don't feel like that's the case here. No. Well, be to wrong. be fair, <laughs> you would wake up with something. Her dad yeah. did say we could end up incapacitate. In a he didn't say kill. Yeah, but then you guys killed like four of them. Yeah, yeah. factual. Yeah, but that means more gold for him. I'm just saying. Anyways, Canathar's turn. Oh. <laughs> All right. Get him, kid. I'm surprise, surprise, gonna attack Sword Guy One. <laughs> Do it. You're doing great, job on him. Oh, you're actually gonna attack him this time? Wait, is that his health? At like full green. Kevin, I'm just gonna. This oh, one, okay. I think. So it's like. At least Kevin. Your, yeah. I'm just gonna hit. Uh, 13 so. hits. So. Yeah, you're fine. Yes. Once I finish, I need to get into a better position. Thanks, buddy. I'm alright. Come on. I've almost been in this situation before. Um. This is like a regular Tuesday. I'm actually gonna. Having a seizure. I've been in some exact situation. I'm gonna use disarming attack. The captain guy, sword guy. Mace bro. So he takes. 13 slashing damage, <laughs> and he <laughs> makes a Sword guy one? strength save. Yeah. 13 slashing? Yep. Damn, son. Yeah. Uh, when he hits, he hits. You know what they say? 16. Gosh. Oh, um, I'm pretty sure it passed. I'm pretty sure it's okay. 14. Yeah, so he passes. Okay. So he doesn't drop his weapon. Ah. He takes full damage. I cannot. Okay. okay. I didn't think Anything else? Okay. Well, um, I, I think I'm good. Okay. Um, Cassius, I attack again. I am going <laughs> to hit. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. That's. Mace Pro. Mace Pro. Twice. Using an axe. Twice. Okay, okay. never mind. What? I'm going to spend a luck point. That's when I read. That's fair. I, I, read usually. I did some work in the arena, though. Yeah, I'm going to spend another luck okay. point. I'm not going to open a map and no, I'm too good for the arena. What, what it's saying, right? You said their AC is 12? Yes. Hit twice. Okay. Hit twice? Oh. Yep. On Mesa, bro. We got 5. <coughs> nine, 12. <coughs> plus. Eat it all. A 15. You know, since you're done. 18. I had us go in the arena. 18. 18. And I have it set so we die. Goes down. And we all had backup characters. Like Justin yeah, and Justin, and then like we're in this game, so like, oh, those guys got fucked. Mace yeah. Bros down. <laughs> Jeez. Mace, Mace, Bros. Mace Bros down. Alrighty. Is that it? Yeah. Mace Bros. Is those down. Mace Bros. Home. A dragon in the arena. Scout one goes after your your eel. He misses. He gets an eighteen. He hits. Okay. Do you have six hit points to spare? Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe six. I don't want some. Six piercing damage. <laughs> Help you spare rear. Did you just me use mean damage for it? Yeah. For for a fight as big as this, I felt it was prudent. Like if if this were like a solo fight with the captain, I might be rolling things individually, but I felt like mean it would damage. be like, a little yeah. bit more prudent to do everything on average. So we've got one guy sword guys up. We got captain guys up. We got sword guy threes up. Let's clear out all the dead bodies here. For a few reasons. Who's behind? Oh, that's Turk. Still might have trouble yeah, doing me. it. Mm. We've we got a couple sword guys no, no. and the captain. I'm going to look for a different Since token for mine. It has palm rejection. So <laughs> it's usually just so that the palm doesn't type when you're doing this. It's fine, though. But you usually have to do, like, touch it twice. Or it's out. usually just this. Thing. I charge the remaining scout. And put my sword through his snout. <laughs> that rhymed. Uh, can he get extra points for that? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 22 to hit? Yeah. 13 damage. Are you confirming my, my roll? Yes, it is. Well, no, I said 22 to hit, and you said yes. I was like, are you confirming my roll? Yeah, I'm confirming your roll. 13. 13 damage? So Taking him a while to add up 6 plus 7. Dead. So Down. Gone. Can I just kind of sit down and watch the battle? Did you take on all those scouts yourself? No, it, Kevin one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, oh, that's right. And there was the magic missile. Yeah, there was the magic <laughs> missiles. <laughs> right. You, you just annihilated all of them. Too. And then you cleaned oh. up. So I like six. to imagine your real just so standing there, like, there covered in arrows. Like, I watched the battle go on. Like, I'm down with it. I only have one D6. Good. Alright. 
Domino's up. All right, Domino shakes it off, and uh, he's going to <laughs> shake, shake it out of off. his leg. <laughs> <clears throat> Get behind Sword Guy. That's some poop deer on the ground. And he's a little leery about using that magic missile again. <clears throat> so he's just fucking cocksucker. <laughs> um, he's going to wow. swing wildly. He, you know, after he's got a lot of shit in his pants right now. It's kind of hard to move. Uh, it swings to hit with a, a, an 11. That sword guy. Four. I'm sorry, what does he get? An 11. 11. Which is a literal shitstorm. So he got four. Oh. He has advantage. Uh, yep, yeah, that's with advantage. Okie dokie. The other one was a natural one. Wait, Okie dokie. Somebody eat the last okay. mm-hmm. deep dish. Somebody eat the last deep dish. Here, put this back. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Domino? Deep dish. Uh, uh, fuck it, he's going to action search. Do it again. I like that we're all players and then we're rogues. Man, I rolled <laughs> another natural one. The other one's better, though. Okay. 18 to hit. 18. Is that, that hit? hits. Uh, nine damage. There you destroy go. Strat. Wait. That's the good stuff. I, how'd you roll a natural one and then have 18 to hit? I have, an ed- I have advantage. Oh. One was a natural one. Okay. And as was the last one before I action surged. Okay. He has plus seven. <clears throat> Out of four dice, I rolled two natural ones. Can't be Welcome chased. to my world. <laughs> no, plus seven. Yeah. Uh, the three cousins go. Uh, they shoot at Sword Guy oh. Four. Uh, <laughs> if you, if you roll a ma- natural one, you miss automatically. Two of them. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Nice. So that was. All right. Mm-hmm. He didn't. Turn. Matter, right? He yeah. fucking missed. Gotcha. Uh-huh. Get a Metris. Metris, Metris. He's our man. If he can't do it, great. Boy. <laughs> no, he's on our team. <laughs> I know. Metris uses his second win. Betty and Jeff. You ever hear that? Shit. Now he does. Not even that funny. <laughs> you should have had a clear pipe. <laughs> Sword Guy 3 and Captain Guy kind of engage in this like flurry of blows with each other. Metris takes a hit. Sword Guy 3 takes a hit. Captain Guy is fine. Do they take any damage from this one? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, everybody's dead. I, you. I would not tell you if you did, though. How are you guys all doing for your points? Decent. Um, I'm at like four. Oh, oh shit. I'm at 13. 26. 11. Canathar. 13. If you add up like three oh. of them, I'm still ahead. 26. <laughs> Well, um, to be fair, Chase and I, I just we're even have. with you. Uh, Kandara stretches out a hand towards uh, Domino, taps a stud on her finger, or on the back of her hand. <laughs> no, it's dangerous. Stop. <laughs> she explodes. <laughs> we lose. <laughs> she hurts me. Oh, Are you still getting fuck. paid? Or? Um, <laughs> oh, fuck. I don't know what is her wisdom. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it's just reading your article about adversarial DMing. You heal three hit points. Kandara starts violently throwing up, falls off the wagon. Great. We Is all heal three. Again too? Just me. Just, oh. just, can I no, she's her? not on con- conscious. Can I catch her? She's just. <laughs> bleh, bleh. Catch her. Never mind. You said she fell off while throwing up. I'm yes. gonna catch her. She can hit the dirt. 
It is now Yui's turn. Where is yep, she? Yep, not right saving now? her. Okay. Not in any danger. <clears throat> <Yeah. sighs> well. Yui, Yui, he's our man. Uh-huh. I'm going to go ahead with another direct attack. At some point, Herber moved. Possibly <laughs> while Kandara was vomiting and falling. Wait, where did he move? He moved from here to there. there. Oh, he ran off in the desert. That's what I was thinking <laughs> for a second. He just I'm going to run another attack on uh, Captain Guy. A desert raptor carried Jeez, Herber away. <laughs> what? <laughs> Captain Guy is one square right from Desert raptor. Right. Yeah. Oh, he moved. You you were yeah, attacking attack this guy, sword yeah. guy. Oh, I was attacking uh, attacking sword guy one this time. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna attack sword guy one again. Okay. Uh, eighteen. That hits. Very nice. That hits. And one d six plus four for my weapon. Plus two d six for your sneak attack, which you get. Yep. Oh, because you are adjacent. Yep. So one d four or one d six plus four, so that's eight plus two d six. Yeah. Let's roll two more. Plus three, plus four. So eight plus seven 15. is fifteen. Nice, nice. hit. He's down. <coughs> he is down. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking rogues, man. Best class. Except for right. wizard. <laughs> I Except think that's arguably true. Rogue. Except for wizard. As far as utility. <coughs> rogue wizards. Best. I don't know. Bard's, <laughs> Bard's a pretty good starter class. Turok. If you don't know what you want Turok to Turok would like to move play behind Sword Guy three. <laughs> Turok moves behind Sword Guy 3. What's behind Sword Guy And then guy he wants to attack. Where is Sword Guy 3? <laughs> He's over there. Spider. He's adjacent to Captain Guy. Yes. <laughs> Captain adjacent. <laughs> and then he would like to attack him. Do so. He rolled an 11 plus 8. That hits. I knew it did, but I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> and then I got. I rolled an 8 for damage plus 6 like is 14 damage. 14 damage. You never noticed what? Ooh, you chewed through quite a chunk of his health. <coughs> you just kind of, what do you have, a sword? Oh, Spear. I Spear. It. You can just get in there and you just swirl around like, strength? A, like you're <laughs> fucking wringing out the laundry. Yeah, you like that? No, I like it. <laughs> Not sexually, but... Not yeah, sexually. Anything, anything else for Turok? So much. Turok is done. Mm -hmm. Sword guy That's two. I just go for a pick here. Fucking runs. You never have to worry about that. Yes! Away? Finish him he off. double moves away. Canathar gets a uh, attack of opportunity. Oh, murder him! Finish you! Don't miss. Hits fourteen. <laughs> He's on his he hits. Fuck. Huh. Um, you can deal non-lethal damage. Nah. Wait, I'm I'm just hitting sword guy with the. Yeah, yeah, if it was he, captain he, he guy, I would deal non-lethal, but I'm definitely doing. <coughs> it. Oh, That's it's a, ten. Point. Ten. Yeah. Ten damage. All right. You do some damage to him, he's still fucking running. He's, he's done with this shit. He's still running? Yes. Holy shit. He's running. He double moves away. Have you... Do you have one of those things that, like, tribesmen throw? What are those called? Bala. I was thinking a harpoon, a but... Bola. Or bola, yeah. Sword a guy bola. three. A <laughs> bola? A bola. Like, not a bola, a bola. No, that's, that's the tie with the sapphire on it. It's 18 hit Turok. No, that's a bolo. Okay. That's a bolo, a bolo is two Gatry balls on a string that Batman mm. throws at people. Yep. Although I think that's a call of a bad Sword Guy 4 is in a bad position right now. He uh, disengages, gets back behind Domino. Wait, where did Sword Guy 2 run? Like, off way, into the desert. Wait, away that's from all he does? Like, like, no, like towards you, a... yourself. Okay. This way. This way, Chase. Oh. Off map. Oh, he's off map, okay. Uh, Mace Pro dead. Mace Bro, died. Mace Bro Yeah, Mace Bro did die. I did. Mace Bro died. About a turn ago. Yeah. I will. In that case, it is... Canathar! Um, I'm gonna run to Sword Guy 2, so you're gonna have to move the map. <laughs> Zoom out. Please move the map. I got it. That, that's me. Oh, he look at him moving. Sword Guy 2 ran 60 feet. He ran so 60 feet? I'm yeah, not gonna do that. Moves. You can just run Do you have any feet feet and then use any kind of ranged weapon. If you got a javelin, you could... Yeah, but we could... It. I'll... I mean, do we really care if just some random? Well, he'll go back away. and maybe know and notify that let he could spread the word. Let don't run. don't fuck with us. I'll let him run. That is true. I'm, we're he gonna go up and be like, I'm gonna go these up guys are ten levels later. Guess who Big Bad Evil Guy is? 
Yeah. Sword guy I, too. I played <laughs> Shadow of Mordor. I yes, know how this works. It's me, Sword Guy too. I would really hope. I've got two swords now and three more guys. <laughs> He's sword guy two. too squared. <laughs> I'm now two afraid sword of guy too. I know. I'm now afraid of spears. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna. I, I'm angered by Yui of yours, which gives me a combat advantage. It was good, I enjoyed that. Alright, and Athar is gonna join in in this gang bang of Captain I really hope Guy. He comes back. Right there, yeah. With advantage. With, with advantage. With him and Sandy, now he's like. I don't need. Should I roll just for in case? Will you please yeah. do the voice when he comes back? 22 to hit. Um, and then. This, I'm gonna use another disarm. I love the ones that just scream. <laughs> Seven plus six. I watched six. a guy so 13 the captain and make it strength save. Thing. Let him betray him. And then he what? demoted him. What's happening? Are you attacking, you're here. attacking Captain to Guy? Yeah, 22 to hit. So and scary. then 13 damage. <laughs> that seems like Shit, a lot of words just for like. <laughs> make a strength save. I don't want to. You can't make me. You're not the boss of me. I'm the DM. 14. It ties. I don't know what that means. That means it succeeds. He succeeds? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> we use Linda. He's a warrior. Is that it for Kent? Kenathar? Warrior's not. Yeah. Cassius. Okay. Um, Cassius. So the one guy is taking on Domino. Cassius. I will. Cassius Corner. I like when you're on the DM screen, when you mouse over someone on the turn order, it highlights them. Where Does that on here too? Yep. Well, when I highlight okay. it or someone. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm going to move next to... Excuse me. Turok. Uh, next next way, Silver. That one? And I'm going to make an attack on Sword Guy 3 oh, okay. and mm. Captain Guy. Captain Guy with my rapier. Mm -hmm. You have advantage on both those attacks. So, yeah, fuck at him. <laughs> fuck at him. Wait, does he have a <coughs> sword get three? Yeah, because Metris is an ally. But he's not directly opposite. Wait. Turok oh, is. You're right. So he's okay, is he flanked? Right. No, he he doesn't have any advantage. Well, don't have advantage. It, I mean, well if he is flanked by Turok and Metris, so does it count for Cassius to have advantage on him? Or do you have to be the one flanking him to get advantage? It's a weird question, but valid. Yeah. So what? Does it you have to have an ally on the opposite side of you. Yeah, but Turok but and Metris are flanking him, so do, do we gain advantage on attacking having, him? Or do these guys gain advantage? He's asking if if having two people on either side of you gives you like a flanked condition. Yeah, no, no. okay. That's do whatever you're doing. So, I do uh, whopping super, one super damage important. to the Sword Guy 3. I have the best okay. But I do... Uh, eight, twelve, uh, seventeen, twenty non-lethal damage to. Oh, oh, twenty non-lethal damage, eh? <laughs> with your knives, you do twenty non-lethal damage. He's cutting his cheek. He my blade and he hit him. You're with ugly <laughs> now. <laughs> I kind of see into his chest. <laughs> oh, that's right. Scouts all bad. Uh, the, the captain guy's like, hey, hey, whoa, hey, friends. Oh, he's Canadian. We don't have to make this bloody. <laughs> you have whatever we got on us for coin, and we'll just back away. You won this round. We all know how this this work, this work kind of work goes. Just uh, Yui, if you are take our ass. money, let us live. Who sent you? <clears throat> we know. But. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question to start with. We wink at him. Who um, sent you? <laughs> You know who sent me, and I ain't gonna cross him by saying his name in public. <coughs> it is pretty private. I'm not say gonna bring him up. Yeah, we look around. Yeah, we look around. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna bring up the non disclosure. <laughs> no one here's gonna say anything. <laughs> one of his men could be a plant. We don't know that. Is everyone. <laughs> oh, wait, no, sword guy. Yeah, but would he rather die right now? Or? But I, I think seeing the captain. A hungry know, cactus is rolling by nearby, <laughs> and you guys feel like it's paying a lot more attention to you than it should be. <laughs> it's really <laughs> taking its time. <laughs> There's a bush with crystal lights that's that your real moving. Turn. Are we still in combat? Yeah. yeah. Technically. 
That guy's are talking. we though? That guy's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Keep attacking, yes. Are we? <laughs> I mean, I guess I rejoin the group. I come to Damo. Damo. Oh damn it, Kevin! This is why we can't have next I'll meet things. up with him. It's a okay. Persian rug. Using whatever Before movement I need to do so. Anymore? There he is. Oh, a sword guy for us a lot. <laughs> just, just in case. And then I end my turn there. You're the pussy. You can come by the pussy. <laughs> Alright, Domino's turn. Alright. Yeah, Domino uh, attacks this guy. Mm-hmm. Domino doesn't attack this guy yet. He made sure he has advantage. Cuts yeah. him off and then attacks him. Good <laughs> idea. Uh, 21 to hit. <clears throat> 9 damage. Good lord. I think he died. Yeah, he's dead. I, I was told he had one hit point left. He said that before he got attacked last time. Right. Ah, one hit point left. He's dead. dead. I didn't use it. He right. is dead. So does that mean we Very only awesome. have Sword Guy? No, Sword Guy 3 is dead? No. No, Sword Guy, sword guy 2 up. ran off. Sword Guy and 3 Captain. and Captain Guy, who is like on the verge of death. Yep. I say we kill him. Uh, the three cousins fire arrows at uh, Sword Guy 3. Two of them hit. I got a song. They deal oh, <coughs> oh, 12 shame damage, oh, it is a shame. and he dies. For the longest time. <coughs> Leaving Captain Guy, I think. I'm just saying, if left. Kandara's people still kill guy Captain too. Guy without us talking to him, it's kind of suspicious. Well, let's bring Kandara into this if she's done vomiting. So it's Metris' turn. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I guess we'll let Metris take lead. That's true. Kind of his <coughs> department here. <laughs> Donald says that in combat. He's used to do what he <laughs> please. Sounds like he's attacking him. <laughs> or it's a perception check. Metris gets a really good attack roll. And creeps in his skull. Love Precisely. It. Hit enough damage to kill him. <laughs> yes. Mm. Suspicious. Well, Convenient. Yay! So we did a combat. Um, you guys find nine hundred gold if you decide to su- search them. Oh, oh yes. Obviously, auto, auto I loot. decide you to search all of them before who else. Auto loot has not been enabled, enabled, I believe. Okay, so I like also hashtag valor mode is in this right. Uh, still so you have nine hundred gold. Um, now is a really good time to argue about whether or not you're going to do a group fund or individual. I also take valor for redo your O because I feel like mine would look bad. Individual about the individual gold. I also vote individual. Yeah. If well, we need to pull our money for something, we can discuss that then. Yeah, I'd prefer individual, but I'm fine with party, so. Wow, way to take what a stance. What are we, 150 <laughs> per person? 900 gold? Well, I said what I'd Six like. Ways. Six ways? Yep. 150 per person? I don't know, I'm going to actually use my calculator because I'm not good at math. Chase, what? 900 gold. Six people. 150. Uh, you guys find some long swords, some maces, short swords, daggers, sharp bows, lots of bloody, torn up leather armor. Probably not. With Did insides not spilled onto it. Captain um, guy didn't have any studs? Nope. They're probably. Did like any of them have studs? Uh, after, studs oh, about half a minute, Kandara stops vomiting. <clears throat> and she stands up and Metris goes to her side. And uh, they look at each other and say to you guys, uh, we would very much like to know what he meant precisely by you know why we're here. We did the non-disclosure were approached agreement say we can't talk about the non-disclosure by agreement? your father. That's what a non-disclosure yes. agreement means. <laughs> to bring you back instead of letting you gallivant in the desert. I, he put it something like that. He I said he doesn't want you in the desert anymore. Gallivant may have been specifically you. And he said he wants you back, and he wa- he attempted to hire us no, after we, we met with you. They don't have to, but we declined him. Yes, but I'm sure anyone who's writing up a non-disclosure agreement. They look they, they look at each other. And a lot of gaming places. Don't Metris make says, "Make you not." That means we can expect more of this one. through the duration of the journey. I I realize we probably I'm should sure, have told actually. you a little sooner. In this case, I'd assume so. But here we are. Mm. Mistakes were made. <laughs> Mistakes were made. I'm going to <laughs> I had no involvement in that deal. <laughs> he was on a different one. He was like, I, I swore not to take that one. Kandar <laughs> says, you can at least be trusted to bleed on my behalf, so I can't hold it entirely against you. And Yui 
heard them coming enough to give us warning and they didn't slit our throats in the night, so. You're welcome, my lady. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I will. I'll use an action for that. And. <laughs> I fail. Miserably. Kandara kind of. off. <laughs> kind of heaves a sigh and, uh. Walks back to her wagon and, and Metris is kind of like. Like, me, no. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Herbert is uh Herbert is kind of uh hanging out over by this rock wall like plastered against the stones, just like But not plastered and drunk. <laughs> Herbert, you did great. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm slapping my thumbs up. <laughs> Herbert, I, with my your nerves of steel. Bloody so You're going to do great. Just slap him on the side of the cheek and go, "Good job, buddy." <laughs> and then I tell him, "I believe we discussed hazard pay." <laughs> there were so many of them. <laughs> there was so much bleeding. <laughs> Almost like that was a small group. He's very clearly out of his element. <laughs> why don't Donald you Donald pats him on the shoulder and says, It's all right, Herbert. That's what we're here for. That's why you hired us. He says, You did good staying out of the way. Julie gives a congratulations to Herbert and Domino for both staying through the fight, both whilst smelling like shit. Domino's not that old. Oh. Never mind. I, <laughs> I was like, Herbert's pretty old. Donald, Donald's kind of old. Donald pooped. Yeah, Donald says that. Okay, I'm gonna go get this shit out of my pants now. <laughs> Literally. Wait, what shit got in your pants? Cut the shit. He, he had a seizure and pooped. He, <laughs> <laughs> he it happened. I was too busy missing every he one of my really, attacks. Literally <laughs> shipped his pants. Just don't worry, there'll be plenty of opportunities. Remember, I said 37. There'll be plenty more opportunities. It's probably a fairly common thing to see people seize out and ship their pants, though. Yeah. <laughs> I think that he still sent shit. <laughs> Alright, so that was the 19th of 10th month. Uh, you guys clean up the battle site. Uh, you uh, put some rocks in the corpses, put them a ways away from the campsite. You don't want to attract aminals. Did I get any daggers from this? You said short. Did any of these stunts to heal up before you have a long rest? Well, I have <laughs> nine hit points. No! I'll use my second wind. I'll use my second wind as well. I will first. also do that. <laughs> You said this is in the morning. Wait, no, you said... This was at 3 in the morning. You don't... 5 in the morning. Hit die so. aren't a thing. They are not a thing. So maybe I do. <laughs> maybe you do. What do you gain overnight? I don't remember. You heal up full. Oh. Oh, yeah. I don't know why I'm <laughs> Then I'll sleep. <laughs> <laughs> then I... Then I, yeah, then I won't be using my stud to risk death. Let's take a long rest, then. You use the terminology short swords and such. Yeah. Do I get any daggers out of this? Yeah, there's like a ton of daggers. I think literally, literally everybody, <laughs> literally everybody in the desert. Do you there have two daggers? <laughs> there are at least. Do you have two daggers already? There are at least a lot. Donald's like, oh, you need a dagger. He like pulls out. Can I get out? my dagger back? He literally yeah, has like eight daggers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I can take two more. So I. Have there are like total. eleven more daggers. Okay, I'll take four. Cool. Everybody four total cool? or four new ones? Take four eleven. New, I'll take five total. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally take eleven. I'm gonna. I don't know why you need Whatever daggers are left, like we'll just throw in the wagon in case she needs more wagons. I have this. It's fair. I have a fast action. I can. What did it say? I can you should, throw. You before you should grab a short bow. It's yeah. like having infinite daggers to throw. <laughs> it's way more effective. <laughs> And higher range. There's a bunch of short bows over there where Andrew murdered everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll take a short bow, too. <laughs> All right. Along with you you find a short bow and infinite arrows. I love infinite just arrows. Just going to load, load up the <laughs> whatever for daggers. If he's obsessed with them, I'm just going to grab whatever right. daggers we find and throw them in the wagon. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like throwing like daggers, guys. <laughs> the rest like of the morning passes uneventfully. Like, Everyone sleeps. You what guys what about breakfast? Every day. Eventually what about breakfast? second breakfast? <laughs> 200 more miles pass. <laughs> Afternoon tea? At a rate of 20 miles per day. It's the 30th of 10th month. That's incorrect math. Is it? I don't know. It's 10 it was 9, the 19th, 30? and then we traveled to... It was the 19th at 3 at 20 in the morning. Day, was it, it actually 29. the 20th at 3 in the morning? Are you saying this as Chase or as Canathar? Chase. Okay. <clears throat> <Wow. laughs> 
I was gonna say interesting that you noted it, that when it was three in the morning, was it actually the twentieth then? It it proceeded from the nineteenth into the twentieth. Right, it's a really good question. <laughs> <laughs> the terrain has been flat. Well, Kenneth Ar- been Ar- when Kenneth Ar- realizes the thirtieth, he kind of that doesn't seem right and just Make a fucks check. off about it. Okay, I don't. It's more. Tom's passing awfully weird on It was more of just a stoner thing then. <laughs> if it's a stoner thing, never mind. Yeah, it's mostly just, wait a sec. <laughs> is this interstellar? Well, How much I, gravity is I kind of gather the same thing. He said 10 <laughs> days had passed, and it was the 19th or the 30th. Gravity is yeah. the same as it is in Limbo. It's whatever the fuck you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> the terrain has been flat and brown and cracked. The sky above you is clear with the sun scorching your faces during the day and slightly cooler and the slightly cooler gunmetal colored light of the moon casting everything in the metallic at night. Need any piles of rocks. The air is still. It's always still. There's never a breeze to cool you off even slightly. Just clouds of dirt and crow sank stink kicked up by your passage across the broken earth of the deep desert. It's been pretty uneventful since the, you know, attempted kidnapping and murder. Um, but you guys are accustomed to the deep desert. Your experience in traversing it, you know that it's it's long periods of doing nothing but staring at heat haze until it becomes oh shit fuck piss damn hell shit you know violence and excitement you know a few days ago uh, you were all kind of sitting down for a communal meal Metris and the cousins had just left to guard the perimeter and Kandara was doing a pretty decent jester hound doling out a pretty decent uh, jester hound stew she had cooked up it was more of a chili than a stew a lot of heat and spice and kick to it kind of softened by the sweetness of some sugared uh, agave slices that uh, cooled the tongue and tasted surprisingly good, kind of as like a, a vegetable portion of the meal or a fruit portion a of the meal. <clears throat> what? No. Can I get a recipe? This sounds pretty young. Yeah, I should tell you the recipe. Um, Not as can of ours. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> Chase. <laughs> um, with a groan, Herbert kind of lean back, leans Wank back protein. against the wagon and pats his belly. He uh, kind of watches Kandara for a moment as she's like kind of like playing with the stew and, and tasting it and like kind of cleaning up after the meal and everything and doling it out to all of you. And he says, Miss Kandara, please forgive my insensitive words. I oh, no. I have studied much of the past and, and, and little of the present. Hmm? Your tribe, yeah. we go to recover them and lay them to rest. But but all of us know, we're, we, we all know that, no. that they have passed on. No. Of course. What lays at the foot of the fawn is just Bodies, but they, they don't reside there anymore. They've passed on to wherever it is that souls go. At, souls go after death. What purpose do these tribal rituals, rituals serve when when we risk our lives against your father's minions and Can I and the dangers off? of the death? If you want to try, I would love to. What do you want to do? I would like to tell him to. Ah, uh, how do I want to word this? All right. I'd love, to, I'd love to tell him to respect the rituals of others and understand the sensitiv- the gravity of the sensitivity of the situation. So you'd love to tell him that, but do you tell do him you that? Do you tell him that? <laughs> I would tell him that. <laughs> okay. So, I didn't know if it was one of those things where it's like you unconvincingly, unconvincingly tell him and he's like, you eat. Fuck off. Well, you trying to, to tell her that people are carcasses. That's the role is for... Are you, you to, that's are the, you, the role parts for I you, know. That's, are you trying to pers- like? I'm trying to persuade him to shut up because okay. it's a sensitive time for her. Okay. All right. I just want to know if it was persuade or like scare him into shutting up. Um, roll a persuasion check. Okay. Well, you can you can go for persuasion or intimidation. Well, so whichever your scores is higher. Let's just do persuasion. They're the same. Persuasion. Eighteen plus three. It's um, the best roll I've had all night, guys. <laughs> a little bit of role play. Herber uh, kind of gets a uh, awkward, sheepish look on his face. <coughs> of course. Uh, excuse me. And he just kind of like bolts away from like the the place where you're all sitting to eat. Like I'm gonna apologize on his behalf. He's a Sorry. man of science. Man. Sorry. He he likes to understand things which he doesn't understand. He means well. I'm sure you know of him and you I I have heard of He's an theory. eccentric man. Uh, he is. Not well traveled. At this point I stand up and I go, I'm gonna go talk to him about tact. <laughs> <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. Talk to him about tax as well, like hazard tax and like other types of things. <laughs> 
I'm not a bureaucrat. <laughs> um, at this point, um, Kandara oh, and Metris have doled out 500 gold. <laughs> you don't know where this you. campaign's going, Kyle. <laughs> you've, you've been as well as <laughs> another 100, so 600 total. Each. Your regular pay plus the 100 for that they consider hazard pay for the, the kidnappers and stuff. <coughs> and we got 150 each. from the other one, right? Yes. So, so all total, you've 50. gained 750 since starting this journey. So... Wow, but assassin's blood. <laughs> 600. If only he had something to do with it out in the desert. <laughs> I'd like to toss one copper and make a wish. <laughs> what wish do you make? Out of character. I wish. Can I see? No. There would be one large cloud. I got one large cloud! <laughs> just, it just follows us. Just for a little! Like, I'm not asking all day. You Maybe guys ten have, minutes. You guys haven't seen a fucking cloud in years. <laughs> all the reason why What is for that? <laughs> I cast create water. What is water vapor? <laughs> Chaplain. You know what's funny? Is oh, we lose, or we got 90 days lose a exhaustion of a lot. 20 in my side, rest, right? So. Yeah. And what's your... The one you gain from your hit points being below 50%. Goes away when it's above fifty percent. Oh, so okay, so, so it's have, you we like rested overnight, push. right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm back to full. Yeah, full yeah. hit points. You've had a long rest. Oh, all my <clears throat> any abilities that are restored on a long or short rest are back. <laughs> you surely won't need them for the rest of the night. Uh, I'm out. I was worried. Is that sarcasm? No, no. almost. I'm not sarcastic. Fuck off, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ghost in the night. I don't understand sarcasm. You got a ghost. I also one. usually don't understand sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. All right. So, I, I <laughs> anyway, so it's the 30th of 10th month, and you guys are in the square J19, if you have the map handy. We do. <laughs> I want to see. You're well into deep desert. J. It's hot, you're sweating, the air is still and dry. Crow oh, sank right are plodding the along with their wide feet thumping against the cracker. To the east, you can kind of see the rock formations of the sunless, Lib sunless ruby. Yeah. Like they're miles and miles <coughs> and miles distant, but it's a very you know it's kind of like the ground starts to go down and there's rocks and stuff and you know you know how it goes. See a dragons? perception check made on your behalf reveals the bellowing cry of what sounds like an adult male dragon to the east. Hmm. Is it in pain? Jacob. <clears throat> what? Is it in pain? No, it's not in pain. It's, you know, it sounds mad. I probably would dragon. Oh, your gut <laughs> instincts. Uh, pain or like say like that relief. you are not prepared <laughs> to handle that kind of bullshit. I agree. <laughs> we almost got murdered by people. Um, That's true. I'm assuming you continue. Yeah, Donald says, we go. We need to go. Okay. It is the 9th of 11th month. Another 230 miles pass. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just laughing at something interesting. Okay. Uh, you have arrived in the rocky area of... You, you arrived in the rocky area around the font yesterday and have been kind of following Metris's lead, trying to find where he and Kandara and their cousins uh, left the rest of their tribe. The land is scarred with huge eruptions of dark stone, massive spikes of, of obsidian, volcanic vents erupting in sulfurous black smoke that agitates your eyes and reeks of rotten eggs, as well as molten rivers of lava. The scorched black earth constantly tremors, making every step treacherous, as you cross a land carpeted with razor sharp shards of obsidian. This is like the ground is like it's like pine needles near a pine tree, but it's razor sharp pieces of obsidian. Like that's what it's like. Are we still like if you cards? were to drag your foot, you'd make a I, pile. I continue yeah. picking one up and I hand it one to um, Yui and I saw another dagger. Are we <laughs> Are we still in the carts? Yeah, you've we... got wagons. You're still with the wagons. I'm so wagons. I'm up to seven daggers now, is what I'm no, understanding. Yes. What I've been doing is every day that this passes, I just I approach you, I hand you a dagger. I do like out of the daggers. pile that we <laughs> What you do is you get a box and you put the obsidian splinters in there and then you've got a box of daggers that you just throw at people. Like the whole box. Or like a bag like a and you swing it over your like head. A you got a bag. You, you get like a super I, like, I like the idea of a sling of daggers. A, sling of, <laughs> a sling of daggers. Yeah. Can I do a sling of daggers and hit like six people at once? No. Why not? So above it's it all, stands the like you're, you act like you're the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and listen to my yeah, magic words. And the DM made a ruling. 
Above all this fucking geological nonsense stands the font, huge and black. It's still kind of like a day or so distant, but you can see it, just this huge black shadow looming over everything, a domed city of matte black Rujgao stone that no human or Goliath has been able to enter in the last 4,000 years. <clears throat> the moment Kandara saw the shadow of the font, she retreated into her wagon and began sobbing quietly. Um, her drivers, the cousins, they're focused on the task of before them, but like your gut says they'd rather be in the wagon with her, like just like being a mess. Uh, Metris, as I said, has been leading the par party. Uh, he looks kind of weary and sad, but he's powering through. Uh, periodically, he'll wander over to Kandara's wagon and they'll confer through the door. Uh, sometimes it sounds like he's trying to get a better directions from her. Other times it sounds like he's kind of like trying to offer words of support and encouragement and that kind of thing. Um, Herber is doing okay. Uh, he's old and doesn't have the same keeping him health anymore, so it looks like he's aged about five years since you started out many days ago. Fantastic. Um, but when he saw the font, a uh, kind of like hungry look crept into his face. Mm. Like, you can tell he's excited. He's using his cane a little bit less. He's a little more energetic. He's... He's... Wait, so we're out of the wagons now. You're in the... You're on the wagons or in the wagons or adjacent? Well, just, maybe you walk We're still there. going there. Oh, okay. you're still on the way. I'm just kind of describing okay. what's been happening. Um, Herber is excited to see the font. He didn't start this journey out like wanting to go there or needing to go there, but you can tell that he's excited to, to finally be reaching it. Kind of. um, your food and water supplies are good. Your wagons are in good repair. The crow sank are healthy. Um, unless you have something in mind. You keep following Metris's lead. I had him picturing this like Mount Doom where there's like the ash cloud over it. Mountains. Yeah. Is there any way I can the distance. ask Metris like <laughs> if he knows a rough distance? Like how close we are to our destination? Um, In a way that makes it sound not like a mission, more like a. Greg's leaving, I think. Yes, Greg has to leave. I'm sorry. I, I implored the gravity upon future uh, ab adventures here, and I will not be disrupted from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it goes until 2 or 3 in the morning. Okay. We never go that way. But no. Well, you anymore. said around midnight, and I was like, all right, 1130. That's it. And the of accent. course, 11. <laughs> What's that? He said, we never go that late. Not anymore. And I said, not since the accident. <laughs> and I just looked. <laughs> just looked Into the, the distance. That was the best part. He was like, not since the accident. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I explained. There's a reason there's a seven. I explained this to people at work, and they were like, you play D&D? &D? And I was like, no, you don't understand. It's like acting. And they were like, that, that sounds awesome. And I was like, Right? Right? Like, you get put in these crazy-ass situations, and they're like, what would you do? Start figuring shit out together as a group. And they were like, that sounds so cool. And I'm like, exactly. Why does everybody think it's so horrible? You should do it for team building at work. Exactly. Uh, I might start a, t a Yo D&D. &D. They're actually starting to do it um, with uh, inner city kids. They're That's doing it as a way to bond. <clears throat> Andrew, Chase, you guys don't know my name. It's cool. I know you're Greg. 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 Kyle. Uh, Greg. Sorry. Sorry, I'll leave. That's alright, That's alright. Okay. That's, that's, that's alright. Alright, drive safe, dude. Keep my cooler safe. Oh. And my beer safer. Actually. I'm feeling such a nerve right now. <laughs> I'm feeling such a nerve right now. Keep that here. I won't drink it at home. Okay, I can keep it in the freezer. Would you prefer cold? Yeah. I'll put it in the freezer. I meant like keep it here so Got it. Cool. See you, bud. See ya. See you later, Greg. Bye. Bye. Hope you find your dad. Right. Back to D&D. I'm sorry. What was happening before that? Uh, I we just asked how close we were. We changed the map to our destination from. Um, uh, Metris, Metris. Uh, says to you, I don't know how to find the resting place of the bodies. The four of us were unconscious. Kandara heaped our bodies onto the shattered remains of a, a wagon and. She and a half dead crow sank dragged us out of here. I'm not sure she'll even be able to find it either. She was starving, dehydrated, wounded. She dragged us out of here. We were we were trying to find a mass grave that she buried a husband, two sons, two daughters in law, 
five grandchildren and a few cousins in. I can't find it. I don't know if she'll be able to. And and she won't come out of the wagon to look. And he kind of takes a deep breath like I just did. And he says, I haven't the strength to force her from the wagon to stop crying long enough to find the grave. I've been her bodyguard for two decades of my life, and she is the closest thing I have to a younger sister. I cannot force her to... I cannot find it in me to force her to face the pain of finding the dead. Canathar has been staring at him, like, trying to listen, but you can see something's on his mind. And once he finishes, he's like, I need to go take a leak. And then... (laughs) (laughs) I, uh... How perfect. Chase Bender, everyone. (laughs) Now everybody knows where he lives! (laughs) I can pay too, does anyone else have to? Yeah, Yeah, let's take a break here. Alright, so after that awkward moment with Canthar running off to to Piddle, uh, Metris kind of looks at you guys and is, uh... (sighs) Can you just please find a way to get her out of the wagon and focus on what we need to do? I'm tired, and I'm weak, and my heart is sore, and I can't find it in me to force her to relive the storm. Oh. I, uh... I can give it a try, I suppose. Donald says, Donald kind of takes, he says, let me go talk to her. Thank you. So Donald makes his way over to her wagon. uh, Is her wagon, her wagon's covered then, obviously. Yeah, they're... The wagons are big boxy wooden affairs. Like they're they're all like one solid. Something piece I can them. knock on. Yeah, yeah, totally. Okay, I definitely don't just open the door. I kind of I kind of knock and I say, uh, <clears throat> uh, "Do you have a moment, Miss?" What? Uh, we're we're here. Do you mind if I come in, sit with you for a moment? Whatever. So dumb. No. Opens the door, begrudgingly, <clears throat> kind of clambers in. You enter the wagon, and it's it's not like any sort of like elegant thing. It's it's all like stack barrels of water and, and crates of jerky, and you know, like a small sleeping bag in the corner. Like it's not like some noble woman's opulent right wagon. Okay, down the lines, a, 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 you know, maybe a barrel or something to sit on. Kind of <clears throat> takes a seat and. Puts his arms over his knees. He says, this place, not many good memories. I, uh, anytime I see the Dame of City and I just, I think of everything and everyone I've lost to the razor storms near this damn place. It's not easy, is it? No. This desert just takes and takes and takes and... It It does. It it always has. <laughs> Probably always will. But uh we came here for a reason, right? We're we're the survivors. And we owe it to those who can't say the same. To help put their spirits at ease. Can you get that from her? Yeah, no, I don't. Mean. Way to go, Arya. <clears throat> Kevin's giving a heartfelt speech. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, yeah, we uh, we owe that to those that have passed. Uh, they would they would do the same for us. She's, she's weaving openly at this point, and she just, <coughs> just does the whole, like, oh, my eyes, oh, my face, kind of. Domino gets up and kind of goes over and sits by her if there's room and awkwardly kind of puts an arm around her and tries to <laughs> comfort her, you know, pats her on the back a little bit. Not that awkward, but, you know, he's not, like, he's not sure how she's going to react to this. Mm-hmm. And he's genuinely trying to make her feel better. She's... Clearly, as awkward he's, as he is about the embrace, but it's more or less him trying to, you know, it, it, it's gonna be all right. It, uh, I, I know this isn't easy, but 
We need your help. We, we made it here. We can't let that be in vain now. I suppose that's true. What's the point of me paying you all to come this way if we're not going to actually do it? And she kind of runs off her, her finger, her hands like through her hair and stuff. And <sighs> you can see that like her, the powders of her like eyeliner, like medieval eyeliner, like cool, I think it's <coughs> called. And stuff are all like <clears throat> all over her face and cheeks <laughs> at this point. Her eyes are puffy and red, but. She takes a deep breath. All right, Len. Then let's go into this hellscape. Wander around until we find all the dead bodies of everyone I've ever loved. <sighs> all right. And yeah, he 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 has no words at this point, and uh, he kind of leads the way. I oh, always open the door for him. Did these guys die in a razor storm? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Once Donald's done, if it hasn't helped, <laughs> the same thing has happened in my trial. <laughs> so that maybe I can help her. Wait! Wait! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're doing <laughs> out here? <sighs> oh, this is the Razor Storm play. <laughs> At that point, this is it. where the Razor Storms come from! <laughs> Kind of step in behind. Uh, oh God, Chase, you're very Domino. dear to my heart. <laughs> I step in behind Domino and uh, I sit down, kind of like on the opposite side of the wagon, and take a lot, like a deep breath, and like kind of let with the air, the air of the room, just like calm down a bit. Yeah, I'm gonna say something I've never said. To anyone. He's like, he pulls out his dagger that he made the oath on earlier. Uh-huh. And he says, I lost my sister getting this here. And he says, because of me, she's dead. He's like, believe me when I, I know, or believe me when I say this, I know what it feels like, but we need to go in there. And we need to take care of them. Because you and I both know what happens when you don't bury your dead. Alluding to his belief that when the dead is not interred correctly, they become the husks. She kind of is red-eyed and tear-streaked and stuff, but, but looks confused for a moment. And then kind of understanding of what you're getting at. Because they're not exactly uncommon tribal beliefs, but I mean, they're out of character, they're not right. And her particular tribe doesn't believe them. Yeah, I know, but what she gets what you're, you're getting <laughs> at. He doesn't know that. He's young. Right. <laughs> He's young. He thinks everybody believes that. <laughs> But, uh, <clears throat> alright, you all get out of the wagon. She kind of, uh, you know how, like, they say, like, if you learn something when you're drunk, you can remember when you're drunk, equals up to be hammered? Are you trying to say we should we bring her near her death and she'll be able to. <laughs> Um, I don't think it's that she can't remember. I think it's that she don't. She doesn't want, she doesn't she doesn't want, to. want to. I think it'd be very hard. Though. I mean, in her state, I wouldn't imagine she has a perfect memory of it either. Um, I would say she crawled out in it. She uh, steps out of the wagon with Domhnall and uh, <coughs> Cassie Sinto. Uh, she kind of pans across like the horizon, looking at the font, which is a few hours south of you, and looking around, and and she's kind of looking at the the jagged terrain and kind of behind you and and just kind of getting a feel for where you are and uh she's still crying 
in which he steps in to lead the, the, the caravan with Metris beside her and starts walking. And you guys follow, I assume? Yes. Yep. And it takes about... It's close behind. It takes uh, two, maybe three hours, and you drop closer and closer to the foot of the font, and you just kind of go back and forth through these twisted passages flanked by huge spikes of obsidian and, and volcanic vents and lava flows and stuff, and just this nightmarish hellscape of geography. And... You end up here, at the font, right at the base. <sighs> Say what? And you kind of come around this, this. you kind of come into this little kind of, I don't know, opening, field, flat area, expanse, and... Oh, there's the font, the gray wall. There. Yeah, that, 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 that blackish, grayish wall. Um... Even if Kandar were not standing still and staring wide-eyed at the area of stones there, um, with her, her fists clenched and trembling at her sides, you know that this is where it happened. You can see the sh shattered remains of something like three or four, maybe five wooden wagons, planks of splintered and broken wood with thin plates of armor still bolted on in places. Um, the big heavy bones of draft crow sank litter the area. Studied with studded with obsidian splinters and draped in the dried out remains of flesh and muscle tissue, um, scraps of leather, broken water casks, pieces of armor, a knife, a pile of arrowheads, a child stuffed animal, all the odds and ends of a family group and their wagons. Like, like just like, it's like someone took a family home, and just pounded it into the ground here. That's what it looks like. Animals, gear, toys, everything just swirled around and covered in obsidian splinters. Uh, beyond the mess of the destroyed caravan is the wall of font, and it is flat and black and utterly featureless. <sighs> At the base of it, there is a pile of small stone of stones and disturbed earth. Uh, Kandara kind of just gestures at it, and you can very clearly see that it, it's, it's stones and disturbed earth, and, some, and things have been digging at it, and, and you maybe see part of a foot sticking out from it and maybe a hand here and maybe a little bit of hair there and you try to not see it because if you see it she'll probably see it if you point it out to her um uh Metris and the cousins uh kind of start unloading the the coffins and shovels and that sort of thing uh Herber with a for once appropriately solemn look on his face, uh, walks towards Karandar and something and mutters something to the effect of, "My condolences, madam," and then proceeds very past her to ver move very close to the wall of the font, like right up on it, like right with his nose, almost touching it, and he goes so far as to poke it with his cane, just like. He's never been this far, and, and it doesn't quite look like a kid with a with a new toy, but it's kind of moving in that direction. Like he is fascinated. Do, do we have a sense of scale of how tall these walls are? Just like the city walls, okay. it's it's the same octagonal like a mile high, octagonal shape, okay. mile high. But this one kind of comes to so it looks kind of like like maybe <coughs> maybe like kind of like a D twenty, like where it comes, but it comes to a point up at the top. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you couldn't even get over the top of it. You, there's no wall to like climb over and descend. Okay. Whereas in the city there is. Jesus. Right. Okay. Yeah, the cities look exactly like so this. So, is the it camp. just assumed that this is a city inside? That's long been the suspicion. The suspicion has long been that, um, and if, if it were Herber, he could go on for hours about this. I'm assuming he did at some point. As <laughs> way down. The suspicion has has always been that it is the last bastion of the gods before they, they were destroyed by the Luge Gao. And cut up into artifacts, okay. with only the the god of endless winter, whatever whatever the gods did when they were at their weakest, sealed the god of endless winter in there to heal or die or whatever, and trapped them outside to be killed by the luge gao and cut up for spare parts. Okay. That's that's the the generally accepted story. No, there's no doors on this either. Like it's all one. Sheet of stone. Correct. Okay. 
So. <clears throat> I guess I'll start digging. If any of you happen to approach the font and touch it with your bare hand, please let me know. I don't do that. Yeah. That sounds like a terrible idea. I don't know what either. So, the, just to be clear, the intent is to bury them here, not to put them on wagons and carry them away. I think you did. Or are we, <laughs> are, we, are, we, or are we digging them out and then transporting them? Digging them out, transporting them in coffins okay. to the ancestral lands of the Octon tribe. Okay, that's like, just, yeah. Kind of near Millen. Okay. Far to the east. So, um. Yeah, I guess we just get to it. Uh, Should somebody stand watch? Metris and the cousins have laid out 12 compact wooden boxes of varying sizes. Like, there's, there's adults, and there's, there's like, five child-sized coffins. Um, and Metris kind of, like, I'm, Get not fucking, I'm not fucking doing this, guys. <laughs> this is what you're here for. <laughs> yep, Donald we'll grabs it. And hands you all yep. shovels. Aside from the noise of us digging, is there Donald touches his raised dead stud. No. Whoa. <laughs> 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 Yeah. So it's like Revivify. eerily silent, or it's just like they dig themselves out. <laughs> the the ground is the j ground has been tremoring <laughs> constantly <laughs> ever since you entered into this area. Like this They're area is up, volcanically <laughs> active, and and earthquakey active. There are tremors, there are rumbles, there are there is belching from volcanic vents. It's not dead silent. It's normal quiet. Okay. There's noise. There are things happening, but nothing like okay. right here. By you. I think we should probably have someone still keep watch. Like while we're we're doing this, with us being as close as we are, you be four. Okay. Yeah. How about Karnan and Yui? Yeah, we'll have Karnan and Yui keep watch. Karnan and, and Yui are on watch. The, you guys the, dig? The, the, okay. The wagons looking around. So, uh, Domino's grumbling. Why the fuck am I digging? I'm the old guy. Why am I not watching? But he's still digging. <laughs> but he's digging. So you guys are digging around at, at kind of like, you know, you're kind of carrying rocks and, and eventually carrying bodies and you notice that there are large hoof tracks kind of meandering around this this area. Like crossing hooves or larger? No, uh, crossing down at hooves. They have big like lizard claw oh. stuff. They, oh. No, I think they have lizard claws. I guess when you describe them as cattle, I just assume. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. That's okay. So, you notice these big hooves kind of scattered about the the site like something was meandering and, and poking at things. Um, based on the size of the hoof prints and their distance apart, uh, the creature's about 8 to 10 feet in length. Uh, go ahead and make a nature check for me. Whoever wants to. All of you. Maybe one of you. Oh, I think my nature score is pretty high. Five. That is not true. Uh, Three. Three. Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Sixteen. You're you're pretty sure these are the tracks of a of a desert goat, and and they're not a common creature, but they are something you've heard of. They're they're kind of like a dire goat. It's it's like a ram. That's about eight to ten feet in length, with like rhinoceros-like hide and two huge curling horns out the sides of its head. They're not necessarily ill-tempered, but they'll eat pretty much anything if they're hungry. The tracks aren't like. This was just here. Okay. But they're not like this has been this thing hasn't been here in weeks. You know? It's kind of in that gray area where maybe it was here within the last couple of days, maybe it was a week here a week ago. Domino mentions that all right, we need to be on the definitely keep a keen eye out. Are we at least with this being active, are we at least like in the shade? Sometimes. And then like yeah, like depending on where the sun is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just know if it was like like a big cap of smoke cover over everything. Um, the grave is shallow and it's mostly filled with obsidian splinters. It's easy to navigate, excavate. You find all twelve seven cor corpses, seven adults of varying ages, five children, none of whom are in their teens yet. They're all pretty well dried out from the desert air, um, but it's easy to see what would kill them. One was trampled by a crow's ink. One was crushed by a very heavy weight. Uh, most of the children look like they were killed directly by obsidian shards flying through the air. Um, uh, it takes about an hour or so to get all 12 of them out of the ground and into appropriately sized wooden boxes. Uh, by the end of it, Kandara is trembling and leaning against Metris for support. 
Um, as the as the final box is is nailed kind of shut by you guys and the cousins and stuff, um, she just collapses to the ground. Uh, her knees savaged by obsidian splinters, like her her leather armor is just shredded apart, and she's bleeding all over the place from her knees. She just starts fucking shrieking and sobbing and pulling at her hair, like feathers and beads from her hair go flying. Her braid like gets torn out basically. She starts slamming her clenched fist against the carpet of obsidian. She's, her hands are bleeding now. Donald tries. This. You need to be quiet, Kendara. I know you're upset. You need to be quiet. Do you kind of like try to like restrain her a little so she's not bashing her body parts into this razor sharp ground? Yeah, I, I do. As, as long as Metris, allows... Metris, Metris is right there beside. Okay. You. Yeah. Good. So Definitely. You guys get her pretty well controlled, and she's still just kind of sobbing and. Sh- like, she can hear you, and she doesn't, like, say, okay, fine, but you can tell that she try tell that she, like, she hears you and understands you, because she's almost, like, whispering now about how Akarin and Elen just wanted to see the fucking games, and this fucking desert, and the Luzhgau, and the fucking gods, and sometimes it shrieks of, just, it's not shrieks anymore, but it's just sobbing, and, and moans, and, and just noises of pain and frustration. And that goes on for a while. Um, by the time the hottest part of the day has arrived, Metris has helped Kandara to her wagon, and she at some point passed out. Like, one minute she was just sobbing, and the next it was just silence. Metris kind of peeked in kind of cautiously, and, and she was just fucking done. Um, you've got your wagons all circled together and that sort of thing here. Uh, well, I do that quick enough. Um, Metric says it has been a, a trying day. I think we'll spend the rest of it recovering and and head towards the lands of the Octon tomorrow in the evening, unless you object to that. Um, I honestly would rather not stay so close to the font if we could move, as long as nobody else has. I mean, I know we've had a very trying day, but if we can at least get outside it's the obsidian best to move away from where this happened. Distance will make it feel better. And I offer my stud of cure wounds if she needs it. Um, not, not to her. I'm not taking it out. <laughs> Metris, uh, you're right. We should move at least a little bit. Um, so they kind of, you guys kind of get on the wagons and you go a couple another hours kind of, do you just go back the way you came or kind of try to aim to the north and east? To kind of make sure you're on the on the correct track, yeah, yeah. probably that. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that when we end. At least make sure we're going in the right direction. Um, you keep an eye out. You don't see any more um, desert goat tracks. Um, you do start to see like uh, husk tracks. Husks. I don't know if anyone if anyone remembers, but you guys all remember what husks yeah. are. Okay. Well, for the people listening, I don't because they don't know the husks are kind of withered corpse like creatures that live within 500 miles of the font. They kind of stop being a problem outside of 500 miles from the font, but they kind of scrabble around and, and stumble around until they see people and then they go into like total like fast zombie, rage zombie mode and just they look kind of decayed but they're still kind of alive and they still feel pain but it doesn't really stop them. They're unpleasant. They're kind of undead, but they're kind of not. And sometimes they teleport. Um, <laughs> which is normal. <laughs> which is, which, is, which is normal! You should expect it. You should expect <laughs> it. Um, but you kind of start to see like the shuffling kind of like bare footprint um, of husks. Um, but you don't see any. You don't hear any. At least for the next page, you don't. No, no, no. Um, At some point during our journeys... Donald's gonna try to take a moment when Kendara is at least seems somewhat at peace, and he's gonna try to make these to create. He's gonna create a sound and try to attempt to make it sound like maybe a spirit saying thank you to Kandara from some ominous direction, like a whisper on the wind. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Just to try to kind of ease her spirit. 
Okay. <clears throat> You're not sure it has any effect, but your heart's in the right place. That's and that's kind of. I'm not sure if it'll help at all, but can't hurt. Yeah, that's well, probably. It, <laughs> it could hurt, so, but it. But I do that. Okay. <clears throat> I continue to keep handing Greg one dagger every day. <laughs> one dagger every day. It's not a consistent time. Like there's like times where I forget. Like eleven oh one. I'll go like. I'll oh go shit. like. Oh shit! And then I like I'll run off somewhere, grab a dagger, and I'll come back and I'll just hand it to him. <laughs> so, <laughs> eventually, oh, you all man. manage to get reasonably <laughs> comfortable, or at least as comfortable as you can in the deep desert. The earth still occasionally tremors. You hear Herber's cane clacking. You hear the tread of Kandara's cousins as they walk across the carpet of obsidian splinters. Um, you've all made camp at this point. Somewhere off in the distance, a desert raptor shrieks, and a goat bellows, and blood is shed upon the sands. Um. The normal, familiar sounds and sensations of deep desert, kind of, you're used to them, you know them. Your breathing becomes steady and peaceful. Your eyelids so, so heavy. And you kind of shift into that comfortable <coughs> position that you know you have and can find if you just kind of grind your back into the ground enough. <coughs> and you dream. You dream, and your dream is that of an endless empty space. Not empty. No, not empty. Just so vast that no amount of anything can make it seem as if it is anything other than empty. Everything is gray and featureless until color resolves into it. You see in your dream vaguely humanoid smudges of color. One green, one white, one red, one brown. And in the center of them, a black humanoid, smud, a, a black smudge on this field of gray with white eyes. Other humanoid smudges of color appear, vast numbers of green, white, red, and brown humanoids. Like someone d dipped a thumb in bright dyes and just sketched a billion stick figures with it. Is this normal? Totally. <laughs> the first four humanoid smudges of color look to the fifth, the black one with the white eyes, and it grows and grows and grows, and you feel hunger and pain and fear as it leaches color from the vast numbers of other colored humanoids, draining them of color and making them indistinguishable from the blank gray background of the dream. The black smudge, smudge is larger than all the others now, and it's crying out in pain, and the first four smudges of color step away from it and separate it from them and the other humanoid smudges of color. Eventually, the humanoid smudges of color, the vast numbers of them, reach the first four and destroy them, absorbing their colors and brightening their own. But even though it is near and howls at them in pain and rage, they cannot reach the black humanoid smudge, and it cannot reach them. The dream ends abruptly there, and you wake, feeling a chill in your bones and frost covering the ground around your group. Donald definitely does not share that. But we all had we all had this dream collectively. Out of character, yes, you all had the same fucking dream, and so did Metris, the three cousins, Kendara, and Herbert. Okay. Domino would not be the one to talk about this dream, so unless someone else brings it up. Mm -mm. <laughs> Is it un it's it's unusual to have frost ever. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Like Ever. Yeah, like, Everyone acts like they don't see it. Like, ice is a thing that can be produced from the uh, <clears throat> furnaces of creation, but it is not something that you ever see on the ground naturally. And, and like, there are cold spells. Right. This, is, this is real physical. This is real physical ice, and it is very rapidly melting. I, I bring it up. Our I, bring water it up. Supplies? I bring it up. What's that? I try to replenish our lost water supplies? <laughs> <laughs> you get an extra two minutes of water. Okay, there we go. I drink two minutes worth of water. <laughs> I look to everybody and I say, what in the hell is going on here? I don't know about any of you, but in my entire life, I have never seen frost on the ground. I lean in and say, would, you, would we even know the me? word frost? Yeah. Okay. Like, 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 like there are cold spells. There's ice, okay. you know. <clears throat> uh, 
Metris and the three cousins are clearly uncomfortable and have been discussing this. Um, I can only imagine. Domino kind of asks Herbert, everyone from that, is, is anyone, is that a stud from one of you guys? No, no one, no. Uh, Kandara is still in the wagon at this point, but Herbert is looking at the ice and poking it as it melts, or the frost, excuse me, as it rapidly melts. This is unusual. <laughs> yeah. I would say so. This is Herbert saying this? Yeah. I want to make a deception. No, this happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> In the desert. It's a messed up place. You, you all experienced the dream. Mm-hmm. You experienced the Herbert says you guys, you all experienced the dream? Mm-hmm. I know. Yes. I just know. Kind of, he has his cane and he holds his chin and one could easily suppose that the dream like like the like the insanity of the, the frost in the desert and this weird fucked up dream is like completely lost on him at this point. Like he's gone into like <laughs> mode. Um one could easily suppose that the shared dream is related to our proximity to the font of shadows. But I do not know how or why the font would cause such a thing. There's nothing in recorded history that I've ever studied or read that indicates something like this would happen. And he starts like measuring like the diameter of the frost circle around you all and and like he's poking at the ground and he's, you know, eyeing how far you are from the walls of the font and like how like he's doing all kinds of crazy weirdo archaeological is bullshit. It specifically centered on us. It is large enough to encompass all of you. And the wagons that had people in them. I mean like it's not like coming from the font. But it's no, it's not like creeping from the font towards you. It's okay. a circle around you guys. Okay. And Kand- Kandara comes out of the wagon and she says, I had the most bizarre dream. And we Metris looks did. at her and says, we all did. Did Kandara miss the frost? Uh, at this point, she could maybe she sees like the the, the moisture, but she may probably missed like the actual frost. Frost. Okay. All right. Metro's points like, oh, there was frost here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the legend says that the god of eternal winter lays in Is healing. Is the ground kind of soft now? In depth, <laughs> a little, right? a little bit, yes. <laughs> after after the the very minor amount of moisture, it is a little soft now, like soft enough to like pick up and like rub on your face. If you really want to, <laughs> I do that for extra cool, like. <laughs> okay, pick out the obsidian first. Thing to do. Yeah, pick pick out the obsidian <laughs> first. <laughs> <laughs> it's so <laughs> cool. How refreshing! <laughs> Tomorrow, Cassius hunts the predator. <laughs> No, but that's like a thing. Like they'll put like mud on their face. Yeah, and they yeah, I know, I know. He didn't keep the lighter skin. For <laughs> Do you, did you say the thing about the the god of winter? Yeah. What did you say? So I mean, I, I Turok says like the legend states that he's there, in some form of either death or or life, or either dying or healing. Um, so possibly. He's gained enough life to make a physical impact on the world. Kandara says, yes, it, yes. We I, we are all deep desert folk except Mr. Kamto. We have been wounded by the desert and have come to despise this ruined and barren land on some level. I believe it was speaking to us, imploring us to free it, to find a way to restore it, to, to health and break the barriers that are the font's walls and release it into the deep desert to restore some balance, some manner of balance to this land. I believe it is speaking to us. I believe it wants to be free. This is Herbert. This no, this is no, Kandara. This is Kandara. This is Kandara. Okay. To say freeing the god of eternal winter would be a monumental task would be an understatement. <laughs> and as much as I would love to speculate, we have a long journey. <laughs> a lot of time to think, and I really want to sleep. <laughs> We just woke up. We've been digging all day. 
No, you guys have rested. Yeah, we just. Oh, up. this is like yeah. I thought. This is like the this middle of the night. Like it, morning it, after. Like I thought it interrupted sleep. Okay. You dreamed. Okay, never mind. Morning after. <laughs> well, it's entirely it's like, possible, it's, but there's almost no way to know. It's never been done before. We wouldn't even know where to begin. Mr. Comto, she says. You are a scholar of the Lujgal and the gods. You have studied the runes of these ancient beings, their war, their artifacts, and the font of shadows, yes? And Herbert's like, uh, I'm measuring things. What? <laughs> and he's, yeah, yes, my lady, extensively. If there's knowledge to be found about such things, I, I've surely reviewed it at some point in my bed and over a, a glass of fine liqueur. And Kara, Kandara nods. And None have entered the font. Of shadow, no man or Goliath has penetrated to reach the fallen gods, God within. Well, yes, that's what we're doing. Of course, of course. And and she she says, what attempts have been made? Dama would not know this. And, and mm -hmm. Herber does though. He's quiet for a moment. And he's having he's. He's still really fixated on like the circumference of like the frost pattern. And like what it means, but like he's he's kind of looking at the ground and thinking, and, and he's got a little bit of scruff at this point. <laughs> Did he have a beard? No, he had a beard. He has a beard. My mistake. He says many attempts have been made, studs, of course, but the font is as immune to magic as the stone of the city cities is. Siege weaponry, of course, but the font remains unscathed even when assaulted by Goliath-driven rams or catapults. Excavations have been dug below it. But the stone of the walls descends into the massive lava flows that lay beneath this region. Divers using studs descended into the lava flows, but their attempts led to the belief that the lava beneath the fort is not merely a pool, but an ocean. Uh, and the stone of the font goes to its depths and has no entrance or exit or anything that could be cut found. The font has been climbed, but the top is as solid as the walls. One account from days long past describes an attempt by Millen to use slaves as bait for dragons to to get them to assault the font, but dragons couldn't harm it with their acid, their poison, or their claws. In short, all attempts by mortal methods have failed to so much as scratch the exterior. Turok asks if anybody has ever asked to get in. I asked the god that lies within it, or... Yeah, I guess I would say that. I mean, many have... I, I don't know that specifically any have asked, but I know that many prayer-focused pilgrimages have come to the, the font. Donald says, what's the elvish word for friend? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who knows. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do real that shit. <laughs> That's fine. Um, Housekeeping. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if we're being spoken to, it would lead to believe that we might have some sort of way and others might not. The walls of the cities were not carved by man. They were carved by magic. That means they can be opened by magic. Not our magic, but someone's magic. Someone's magic created frost. <laughs> Maybe? Well, <laughs> I mean, Herbert, the god's magic worked through the font, so... Unless it would you can stand just, like, believe alter things if the gods point. sealed it in legend the gods could open it so maybe the artifacts or maybe the god who lies within yeah but the Lushgao had the artifacts no they, they killed, killed the gods, gods and, made and then the artifact. made artifacts so you think they wouldn't you're right maybe they would have tried to get in and you would assume they would I mean maybe they didn't they were driven insane by something or maybe they thought he was dead <coughs> Herbert have there been any documents or reports or even oral stories handed down that tell of anyone having the dream that we all just had? None that I recollect. You're our best source, too. So, Don was kind of freaked out by it, but he, maybe Turok's onto something. You said artifacts, right? I did mention maybe having all the artifacts. And you were speaking as Tarak? Yes. 
when you said something about artifacts, Herbert just kind of got this look on his face like, holy shit. And just like shut down. It's like a like a, a flash bomb went off in his skull and he's just thinking and pondering. And he says very quietly, I cannot recall any tales or histories or documentation of the artifacts themselves being used or attempted to being used to penetrate the font. What about any of the city walls? It, it, it's never... Re in the few attempts that have been made to assault the cities, whether anyone had an artifact or not, they've never reached the walls. The, the descendants of the Lujgao wipe the field of battle far before anyone can ever reach a wall. But that's not the case here in the font. We, we would need something to penetrate the walls and, and heal and, and we're on the way to get the chalice of balance which supposedly can heal or the blood of everlasting spring which can heal what's the most offensive artifact the blades of bone and flame or the teeth of the rotting teeth of autumn were there teeth of autumn I forget what they something are. like that yeah <laughs> excuse me What? what I was just laughing. I was, oh. I was thinking of like the sword of cut through obsidian. <laughs> <laughs> the sword of cut through obsidian. <laughs> Any one of these could be it. <laughs> Any one of these could be it. <laughs> so, do we know where these artifacts are known to reside? You guys are on a quest to find the Chalice of Balance. He goes, what Do you know of any here? others? Like, do you know where the others could be found? I have some ideas. I I know a very few for sure, but I have ideas where we could begin looking. He goes. I could kind of look at Kendara and look at Herbert. I think we say, Kendara. I think we have new purpose. I think this is a calling for you. We'll bury your dead, and then all of us should figure out what this means. We were all called to this. I think you're right, Cassius. And she's got kind of a like <coughs> a crazed look in her eye, like kind of like like you see in fanatics, like like she believes that this is a calling, like this is what she has been called to do by the God of Women. She lived her whole life. Her family died for this, for this moment to bring her to here. How many members to bring her to here? Were dead? What? You said how many Twelve. were dead? Twelve. I mean, she's still got other city folk people, but like she's <laughs> clearly not close with them. Yeah. But twelve months in the year. What? Twelve months in the year. Twelve people dead by the wall. Thirteen, right? <laughs> thirteen months. <laughs> twelve months. Twelve months. Why did I think it was thirteen? All right, that's all I got for you today. All right. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Um, for competing in the great games and for safely bringing Kandaro to the font, you all gain a level. Except for Dave and Greg. Greg left early. Ooh, he texted in the group chat asking if he still got the level. You better let him down. Hard. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> I fun. thoroughly enjoyed it. Hey, too. Yeah. All right. I had an amazing time. So I think we'll be doing your.